This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we're talking with the 105 kilo junior national champion and junior world silver medalist, Anthony McNaughton. Anthony has big goals for 2023, where he's already put up a 900 kilo total and is currently five weeks out from junior nationals. He's got unfinished business at Worlds, where a budding rivalry with Team France and a couple of high squats left a bad taste in his mouth that he is laser focused on correcting before moving into the open division. Anthony is a fantastic guy. Everyone who meets him loves him, so I can't wait for you to get to know him on this lengthy interview. But before we start, don't forget the grand finale of Powerlifting America's national championship season is sub junior junior masters and equipped national starting June 2nd in Scottsdale, Arizona. The classic divisions are full and equipped is not far behind. So sign up before May 1st, if you want to get a shot at making it onto a U.S. national team. Thank you to SBD and Aleco for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay. With that, let's get to this interview with the 105 kilo rising star and Anthony McNaughton. Well, what's up? I got the 105 kilo juggernaut, the McDouble thick man himself. Welcome to the PA podcast, Anthony McNaughton. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's uh, great to see you again. It's been a minute. Uh, It feels like it's been forever, you know, um, since January. And um, but how's it going with you? How's life in general? You know, honestly, I call it the great period of life. You know, I, I graduated college and I'm kind of just all over the place um, between powerlifting and just looking for jobs. I am all over, but it's going good. You know, it's going good. <laughs> That's an exciting time in your life, man. Uh, as an old man, you know, uh, I certainly relish those memories of back in the day. You know, you had your whole life in front of you still and everything's exciting. And, uh, you know, you got a good partner that you're with now and everything like you guys are, you know, go, taking on the world together and stuff. And so it's a really cool it's really cool to witness it. And I know you're such a, a good guy and everything. So I'm, I'm rooting for you. I appreciate that a lot, man. Yeah, you're right. It, it is awesome. I, th- I thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's everyone who I know uh, who knows you, you know, just speaks nothing but super highly of you. You know, I remember actually so like going into junior worlds last year obviously i'm covering the team i'm like trying to learn about all our lifters and stuff like that and i remember that you were working at like a hardware store or something and they had made a post like from the hard like a little tiny instagram account little looked like mom and pops type hardware store and they had made a post with some videos of you or some pictures i can't remember but they were like oh he's so sweet he's the nicest kid and everything like this and i was like damn this guy must be amazing if he, if if his hardware store where he works like uh you know is making posts for him cheering him on for worlds yeah i remember that post that was that was funny yeah it was kind of cool to see that because they don't really do that sort of stuff so to say yeah. but like it was really cool to see that they were so supportive of uh my competitive aspect they didn't really know that i was competitive like that until i kind of was like oh yeah by the way i'm doing this <laughs> by the way i need like a week <laughs> off i go into turkey <laughs> so what was that job uh that you had you know like think about walking into a home depot and uh-huh. that's 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 what it is you know it's just on a smaller scale family mm-hmm. store um yeah. but a lot of things that i'm doing there i'm just helping customers find what they need you know a lot yeah. of people come in they don't know what they're looking for you know a lot of ha- house repair so <laughs> i will say you know like i've learned a lot over the years about stuff around the house. So I think I'm going to be good once I'm a homeowner. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Be good. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And where was that? Um, was that in Cortland? That was actually home by me on Long Island. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So that was like your summer job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Man to be young and have a summer job. What a fun. <laughs> Those were the days, bro. Those were the days. <laughs> now, now things are serious for you. You know, you're out of school and whatnot and you take it on life, but, um, so yeah, man, um, let's recap it a little bit. Like last time we saw each other, Buffalo, back in January, um, you put up a quick little 900 kilo total, like it was nothing, had a pretty casual day, what it felt like from my side, you know, you know how I am at meets, I'm like my head spinning, so I can't really tell exactly what's going on. But um, seems like forever ago now, you know, but um, tell us, tell us a little bit about that last competition that you did. Yeah, so um, really that last, that last meet was not only did I want to see all the, all the friends and everything like that, but I really want to just tune up, just brush up um, mm-hmm. for competition season this time around. And that, that meet was weird because at the time I was like in a, in a weight cut, I was cutting down, I was recomping. And for that meet, I weighed in at 227, no cut. Like I ate into the meat 
Mm -hmm. Um, and usually my training weight in previous in the past has been like, you know, 240. So my training definitely took a hit, you know, in terms of what I was able to handle. Um, so I was kind of nervous going into that meet, like, um, so that's why it was like a tune-up meet to see where where I was at, but to see that I was able to throw up a 900 kilo total at that body weight was kind of a cool thing. Um, yeah. the only thing that really took a hit, you saw it was the bench. Mm. I was really upset about that, but who cares? We move on. And, um, right now it's locked in. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you went, you know, uh, eight for nine, you missed your third bench only, you went up five kilos, you know, and I think, I think you knew from the way your second moved, you know, that you were, you had, you were in a little bit of trouble on bench. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, but still like, like two twenty five was, was clean. And, um, I mean, I feel like you had something left on your squad and your deadlift. I remember your deadlift like like it was yesterday. I mean, and uh, your third deadlift, it was just so smooth. And you just had such a big smile on your face afterwards. I think you stuck your tongue out um, while holding the bar in your hand still. You kind of did a little extra long hold, right? Looked around a yep. little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what? Like that prep, I I took two, seven, I tried taking 750 uh two mm-hmm. weeks out it's supposed to be the plan heaviest pull everything was aligning to that obviously you know how discrepancies happen towards the end of like a comp prep but mm-hmm. i didn't even break the floor with that you know like i took 716 that was smooth went up to 750 and i couldn't even get off the floor so Damn. my deadlift has always been just that that pain in the butt thing to get up and that 750 kind of like that moment right there was such a pivotal moment in my it's it's a weird i know it's a local meet but it yeah. was so pivotal because I, I now I'm realizing that I'm more capable of becoming a three lift specialist. Um, yeah, and, and deadlift really pieced together nicely, despite like what my, my rep training and everything like that has been. Um, I w- I, it shocked me because it moved effortlessly. I didn't even feel a discrepancy between 716 and 750. So yeah. that was really cool. And that's why I stuck out the tongue. Cause I was like, you saw that, you saw that. <laughs> yeah. Oh dude. It was, it was so smooth. And I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, the only thing I was thinking was like, damn, like should have went another five kilos or something. You know what I mean? But I mean, Hey, you know, you secured the bag, the 900 kilo total. Um, you know, that was, that was a big number for you. I mean, you have been previous best up to that point was 862.5. So that was a massive meet PR. You did have to travel for it. I mean, Buffalo is kind of out there, you know, like it's a ways out there. So like there was travel, there was hotel Airbnb stuff involved. Right. Um, and I mean, there was a lot of hype in the room. Like it was a really good room. So I feel like, you know, it wasn't, it was a local meet, but it was a little something extra. Um, it was somewhere a little between like a local meet and like a national type of a meet. 100%. Um, sorry to cut you off, but the way that that meet was ran, I think one, I had the most fun at that meet and two, it was just so so pristine on point like and i'm not just saying that to be biased but realistically like yeah. that was the best local meet that i've done it was so put together mm-hmm. yeah so yeah man and then uh, we had a blast afterwards hanging out we hung out all night like that's the way the buffalo crew does it you go out all night afterwards like go eat some wings drink some beers and just have a good old time till late in the morning we had a, a great crew with us and that was the second time you, you had come out for the first of those meets out uh, back in October as well to handle our boy, Sam. Um, so you had some familiarity with it and everything like that. And like the whole like social scene afterwards and everything. So yeah, it was, it was a blast. And I was, I was glad you brought out Audrey for that too. She put on a show um, in yeah. January as well. So like, it was, it was badass, man. It was, it was really killer. I'm so happy with how that went. And like, you know, she was, uh, it was cool to see her like meet all my friends and stuff like that. Cause she, she's new to the sport, despite like how crazy she is already at it. Yeah. Um, so like, it was good to like get her out and see faces, meet people in person. And she really had a blast, you know? So we yeah. both did. It was, it was really good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I mean, uh, I tell, I tell people you guys are like Romeo and Juliet, you know, cause it's <laughs> like, like you're in with PA and she's in with USAPL and I'm like, maybe the future you guys will like unite the federations back together all around you. So it's like this Romeo and Juliet <laughs> <laughs> star crossed lovers kind of story, you know? And, uh, uh, anyway, it, it's awesome, man. And then, uh, you guys with the whole Shrek and Fiona stuff, like kind of fits right in with that stuff. You're like <laughs> the young prince and the young princess, you know? And so like when you grow up and become king and queen, maybe you'll, it'll unite the clients, you know? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so, a good way to look at it. 
Yeah, it's it's a fun little fairy tale to hope for, um, for sure. So, yes. um, okay, um, I want to ask you also, you know, while we're just kind of catching up at the beginning a little bit, like most current events, what's going on lately? Um, did you watch Sheffield? What do you think of Sheffield? Sheffield was, I, I had I had the chills. I mean, um, obviously, you know, my coach is John, and John is now coaching Gavin. Okay. And Gavin, Gavin's performance, I, I have, like, no words for. Everyone's performance, I mean, Mm-hmm. Jesus just put up that massive total, that massive score. The emotion was just watching that man. That that sets a fire. So like, mm-hmm. I I can't even you know, Mike watch, watching Mikey D like you know yeah. like all that that's just like, holy crap, you know I want to be there and like I can be there. Yeah, but I uh, I I love watching that meet. It was just it was something else, man. And do you watch like do you watch powerlifting in general? Like do you watch like uh the the open classic worlds stuff like yeah. that as it's going yeah. on? Do you just watch your weight class or you kind of pay attention to a lot of it? I pay attention to a lot of it. Um I don't like here's the thing. I'm not I watch it, but I'm not like super analytical, like mm-hmm. only to my weight class. Like I kind of just really, really lock in to see the guys in my weight, but like I'll watch the meet in full and I'll see how it goes for everyone. Yeah. Um but yeah. I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, for Sheffield, though, you are obviously like on the edge of your seat watching the whole thing. You guys watch the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. thing was just on the edge of my seat. Yeah. So, so do you think I mean, did that like light a fire under you? You think like, I mean, not just for your own performance, but just also like where powerlifting can go? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I want to be a part of that. You know, I want to be a part of that. That next step forward for powerlifting. I mean, so many great heads have brought it here. You know, I want to help push it further and whatever that may be. I don't know my involvement would be there, but whatever I could do, you know, it definitely was motivating and inspiring to see how far it's come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was, it was something to watch. And just seeing all those like USA singlets up there and stuff. Like, I mean, I think like on the men's side, it was like the whole podium. And I think like, was it one through five was all, was all us. I mean, it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I kind of like, I was proud, you know, like mm-hmm. seeing a lot of our USA represents out there. That was, that was something that I was proud about. Cause you got that same singlet. So it's like, you're, that's like your team, you know? Um, yeah. And so it's like, I, I bet, so it hits a little different for someone like the juniors and sub junior, like some of the masters out there that have gone and represented the USA um, on these big world stages. And then to like be tuning in, like kind of cheering on like the open team, you know, it's cool. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, um, right now you're about five weeks out <clears throat> from Scottsdale. Um, so junior nationals where you're looking to go in and repeat your national championship and punch your ticket onto the world's team and run it back and, uh, you know, try to redeem yourself for what happened last year at worlds, right? Like it's a big yeah. redemption arc that you've been on ever since, uh, junior worlds in Turkey. So real quick, like before let's, before we get into like the history and everything, cause I think we're going to go through like your whole background story and all this. Um, okay. but before we do that, just give us a little preview, like what's about to happen in, in five weeks, uh, in Scottsdale, like how's training going? So training's been going really smooth. Um, Obviously, since since Turkey, I've raised the bar a lot. And it's not to say my standards are low, but I kind of like realized where I needed to be and above. So mm-hmm. training's been really smooth. Um, obviously, hiccups here and there, but that's a part of it. But for the most part, it's been going really well. My body weight's been going back up to normal previous body weight trends in the past, which is good because now I'm seeing more consistency in my training. Um, mm-hmm. On top of that, for five we- in five weeks, like you said, I'm going to go and just – I'm literally just going to lay it out, you know, um, Mm -hmm. there's, I was talking to John about it. And at first, you know, we had a conversation about what the, what the game plan was for there. Mm -hmm. Um, but realistically I I, want to show out and, um, I want to, like, I want to set the tone for this year around. Like Mm -hmm. we had, John, and I had a conversation and he sent me a text and he was like, it's that time again. And like, you know, it's, it's seasoned. It's we're in season now. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, it went that fast, you know, Mm -hmm. so many things have happened and like so many things have happened, but like realistically the time, where did it go? So, um, I'm, I'm amped up, I'm fired up. And I know that like, I don't want to sit here and, and talk about like, but I, I know I'm going to bring it and um, 
I'm, I'm amped up. I'm jacked up. That's badass, man. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you already broke that 900 kilo barrier. Like, let's say things go really well. Give us like your, your sort of like mid grade assessment of like a number. Like, so don't reveal, you know, let's save the real number for the platform, but you know, like what's like a number that you think is like, you're definitely going to go hit that and be on like nine ten. I'd say safe zone, nine Oh five, nine ten. Okay. Okay, cool. Safe zone, nine Oh five, like things. Okay. I mean, you know, things, you know, things didn't go great in Turkey in terms of like making, making attempts, things like this, like, yeah, you face some adversity and stuff like that, but you've been super consistent throughout your career. Like you typically don't miss lifts. Um, and I think, you know, we saw in Buffalo that you, you know, you got things, you and John got things like really squared away. So I think, you know, we can knock on wood and, and everything, but like, I think, yeah, there's no question about it. Like, you're going to, you're going to hit some PR, a PR total 905, which by the way, I mean, I think that would be a 905 would, according to last year's worlds, you know, that would win, win by 10 kilos. You know, so um, you're right there in that neighborhood of what you need to be at. And then you still have another however many more months to prep for worlds after this. So is there have you looked at the roster yet for Scottsdale? Is there uh, is there anyone that's challenging you? I I haven't. Like, I looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, I saw. So previously in the past, I've seen. Uh, so Paul Horeo, my buddy, Paul, um, he he's in powerful America now. I thought he was going to go 105, but he's going 120. Um, okay. this other guy tank strength or something on Instagram uh -huh. like that, uh, he's going 120. So I don't, I don't, me and Sam and then, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I haven't really okay. checked the roster. Okay. Recently. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, dude, you're, you're putting up open level numbers. So it's like, um, you know, there's, you probably don't need to look at the competition too close. Obviously it would be cool if there was a, a sweet battle or, any, you know, something fun to watch. Um, because I know that will, that battle testing you know, that's what you crave and that's what you really want to like foolproof everything for going to Romania for junior Absolutely. worlds. Um, talking a little bit more about nationals coming up. Do you have, um, are you getting Susie Gary to handle you again? All yeah. right. Yeah. It was funny. She, uh, so a couple, like a month and a half, two months ago, she, uh, reached out to me and was like, Hey, like we running it back this year kind of a thing. And I was like, absolutely we are, you know? Yeah. So she, She's been really, really cool to have in my corner ever since uh, Junior Nats. She's kept, like, she's, the things that she says time to time, like, she'll message me out of nowhere, and she'll really just, like, encourage me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, she's a really cool person to have in my corner now, and I'm super, super grateful for that. You know, not only was she just game day handling me, I mean, she's, like, following me on my journey since we met each other in uh, Florida last year. So it's really cool, and I'm so excited to see her again and i'm excited for her to see the work that i've put in and put on the platform again yeah like she's got a new race car to drive um <laughs> it's got yep. some, some tune-ups and stuff on it and uh you get some new wheels and whatnot and so she gets to take it for a little test lap in scottsdale before sending you out into the uh you know into the big leagues there for junior worlds um that's awesome man i mean i know the gary's as well and like they're just such nice people and um like i know i've been in communication with you in the past where you've said, you know, that Susie has reached out and like said a nice thing here or there, pick you up on a, on a day when you might've been down and stuff like that. And so like, it's just got to feel good to have like a team of people supporting behind you now, you know, like last year at, in Orlando, you were kind of just there by yourself. And then you, you know, you had hired Susie and everything. So you had that, but now I feel like you have like this whole like powerlifting team uh, family around you, like with PA, with the Buffalo people, with Sam, um, you know, with Audrey and everything and then, and then Susie. So it's just like, you can't miss with Vin, you know, like, um, Vin will be there, um, in Scottsdale and like, he helped you out in, uh, in Turkey and then he'll, he'll be helping you out again in Romania. So it's like, you've been there, you've done that. It all feels like a lot more comfortable now. Exactly. Exactly. It's, I got the, I got the crew, you know? Yeah, man. God, I'm so excited for you, man. All right. So <clears throat> That's a little preview. Um, let's get into the backstory because I don't think I've heard you on any other podcast. I at least haven't. And um, I don't know, you know, much about your background, your backstory, how you got into lifting and whatnot. So just kind of give us in like, you know, where are you from? How'd you get into lifting? You know, where'd you go to school? And let's like take it up to like junior Nats next last year, you know, like kind of like that progression that went up to there. Okay. So I am 
born and raised. Well, I was born in Virginia, but I have lived on Long Island since I was a, a kid. Um, I attended Miller Place High School, um, which is a little high school from my town. The graduating class was no more than 200. So like, you know, people know you in the town. Um, but yeah, so really my my desire for lifting um, has it started when I was younger. So my grandfather, he he was a big like, workout guy right like uh -huh. um back in the time of like louis and arnold you know so like that's when he was growing up so all those cool principles you know i, I would i would go downstairs because we have like a little gym there at my grandparents house and he'd be working out down there all the time and i would just go uh -huh. down there hang out with him you know just i wouldn't do anything but i would watch him and i thought it was so cool to see him just moving heavy weights that i never thought in a million years i could move you know i'd ask him how much was that and he'd say 200 pounds and i was like Oh, you're Superman, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I got to like 13, 14, and he started introducing me to like some body weight stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, and a little bit of lighter weights. And that's when things started kicking in that I really knew that I wanted to be something in the gym, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, you get to like 15, 16, that's when like all of the crazy sports start, right? I mean, it starts earlier, but like really that's when like you gotta start like getting big getting you know um so obviously lifting for sports but really that true like passion for the gym in itself came from my grandfather wow um, and just seeing and just seeing because you know even in his in his later years i mean he still looks great you know mm -hmm. he still has he's still retained you know his muscle i mean a good amount of his muscle he looks great he's healthy um and to so see he's him still around muscle yeah yeah Dude, that's wow. That's amazing. So he got to see your progression up to all this man. Like that is so cool. Like, does he watch the live streams and stuff? All the time. If you can figure it out on a small, but yes, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like make a special trip out there beforehand, set it up, and then just be like don't turn it off. And then just exactly you know, fly off exactly. To, to Turkey or Romania, wherever, and yeah, uh, make exactly. sure he's watching. Anthony, I was watching it, but it started glitching out and I, I couldn't see you. Where would you go? Oh man. So you gotta I send got, them videos. Yeah. I got like text um like during worlds like the thing shut off. I can't see it on my phone. I'm like, dude, just figure it out. Oh man, you gotta send <laughs> someone out there, another grand uh one of the other grandkids or something needs to be there with them, like uh, you know, right be a little tech support. Seriously. Um, um that's dude, that's yeah. so inspiring to hear too. Like, because that's one of the things, even like for me, like talking about getting into fitness and stuff, is like being in shape when you're when you're old uh, and being in shape and like being healthy and like how, living a long life and stuff like that um it's it's really cool to see that you know to to hear a story like that that there's you know because that's that's a big inspiration for me as well is like just being healthy like putting on muscle because you see so many times when like in in my family at least like the elderly grandparents and stuff they're, they get really frail and then it's like that's when it starts to get to the point of like okay any little thing and you know they could be gone you know and like um so it's like being strong is a huge benefit in your old age i think and so it's cool to kind of hear that confirmation story so when you i mean do you take a lot of inspiration then like you think about is that is your grandpa like your main kind of like motivating like when you think when you're like thinking about a hard lift or like you're having a difficult time like in turkey for instance are you like thinking back and drawing inspiration from stuff like that you know uh parts of it I mean, uh -huh. the, the motivation has changed over the years, but the initial motivation has always been that. Yeah. And it's always been the encouragement that I've gotten from it, even from a young age, you know, like mm -hmm. um, he still supports what I do, still like the support's always been there. And that's what motivates me. Yeah. Um, but like, what am I trying to get at here? You're like, do it for grandpa, man. Like, like yeah. Vin, before you go out for your third squat, like now he knows how to motivate you. <laughs> yeah. You know what though? It's like, it's like, he's always told me like, why can't I do it? You know, like mm -hmm. we had, I actually had a conversation with him two days ago mm -hmm. and he's like talking about all my, my feats and, and stuff like this. And I'm telling him like what I want to do. And he's like, why can't you? He's like, there's other humans doing it. Why can't you, Anthony McNaughton, you do it, you know? So like, that was a cool conversation we had two days ago that I had wasn't even like that just came my brain that i forgot about you know so yeah, like yeah again like i get so like you could see from just that me remembering that mm -hmm. that i get so much support that i just it's just it's good um but i 
I'm going to digress a little bit and say yeah. that the true motivation has getting a little deeper here, right? So okay, yeah, I've always, yeah. I've always, I've always struggled with like really bad anxiety, um, mm-hmm. like ever since I was a kid, and I never really had like a like a good outlet, and I was kind of just like lost, you know. I was like, why am I feeling like whatever? Mm-hmm. But I'm doing it for him, you know. The younger me that was lost and was like scared, but now I have. I have like a place, I have a a niche that I'm in and I could go further with that, you know? And I look back and I'm like, I was so lost, but I got myself out of it. So like, I think when I think about like the hard times, I think about younger me and Mm -hmm. I think about, I'm doing it for him, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Like you have clarity, you know? Um, And like, I think you found like your community, your people, and um that's really huge for getting you through stuff that because then it's not just about like one meet or one total or anything like that it's like you know this is your life now you know like like it's settled like you're a power lifter like like you're setting huge goals you got family support you got community support you know so you're on the right path and that has to feel good to know like you found your path you know especially as a young man you know, you could be, it, it's very common for people your age to be sort of just blowing in the wind as far as like what their future might hold. And there's nothing wrong with that. That You know, it's like, there's people who don't make up their mind what they're going to do with their life until they're 30, 40, whatever it may be even. So it has to feel comforting though, to kind of have things figured out, you know, at, at such a young age, at least for now, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, thinking back, you know, just like to young Anthony and just like, you know, he would be proud, I think, of the the Anthony that you've turned into, right? Like if you if you go back and you think about like that that young Anthony that has a lot of anxiety and things like that, if he saw you now just like hopping on podcasts, like hopping on uh, flights to overseas to go lift in front of tons of people and like live streams being viewed by all these people and stuff, and you're hitting that clean <laughs> third pull and smiling. Now, I mean, like you would have never guessed that you're someone that has like anxiety or any sort of like self, uh, insecurity problems or anything like that, you know, because you, you're so confident, you speak so well, like you're, you're well-educated, you're smart. You obviously have a good family background. I mean, you're the total package, man. You're the total package. So, but it's good to kind of open up and, and tell about stuff like that, you know, because it shows that you can overcome those insecurities that you have, at, you know, in youth. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like, there it's always it's still here right it's always been here but i've gotten stronger you know mm-hmm. and powerlifting you know i'm not saying that it's changed me completely there's obviously other things in my life that have helped change but powerlifting has definitely given me that healthy outlet um and it's unlike other sports i've seen so much self growth so many lessons that i've learned in this sport mm-hmm. and I'm just, I'm thankful for it. You know, uh, I've learned so many things from the sport. Yeah, man. It's sports given us a lot. And, um, yeah, that's why I love what you said at the beginning too, is like, when we're talking about Sheffield, it's like, you, you're the type of guy that's going to give back and like want to help the sport grow and stuff like this. And you're doing it just, just in your actions as well, you know, and like being a leader, like you would say, like a leader on the field, you know, um, like, like out there in the trenches doing the work and then go put up some big numbers and inspire everybody. Um, but okay, but getting back to like your your story, what sports were you into then? So I played football, I wrestled, and I did track and field. Okay. Um, track and field was kind of like the uh, the season filler, you know, just to, <laughs> just to keep doing it. I would do like maybe I'd run a couple, you know, two hundred yard dashes, uh, but that was that was really about it. Mostly did shop book because I wanted to just use the gym. I was right? gonna say. Like, the shot put guys would go to the weight room. I was like, that's it. I'm shot put. Even though I was a fast runner, I was like, ah, uh-huh. shot put. Sign me up for shot put because we're going to the gym. You know? Yeah, man. Throwers. But, throwers are huge. I mean, I I think when we get more throwers, you know, like um, I was at high school nationals and there was a kid that, I mean, he looked like he would be like a badass, like linebacker or defensive end or something. And he was like, oh, no, I'm a thrower, you know? And it's in he, he, he smashed weights. Like it was, it was huge. So we start getting these athletes like yourself, you know, multi-sport athletes, you know, standouts in certain sports. Like I think throwers are a real good one, um, especially for the like one Oh fives and up weight classes and stuff, you know? Um, but, and then where was that your most, you know, that was, that was like a lot of people like who are in football and stuff, like you do another sport in the off season is kind of just stay in shape 
Um, was football your main sport then, or what was your main sport? It was. Football yeah. was definitely my main sport. Um, but yeah, paths have changed, you know. Yeah. But football, football, I played since I was like eight or nine, you know. So I grew up with that yeah. sport. Um, I wrestled too. Like I started when I was like 11. Mm-hmm. Um, but football was like the main. You did wrestling as well all through high school? Uh, up until my junior year because okay. I wanted to get big. I want I wanted to get jacked. You know, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to take myself to that next level. And I felt that wrestling wasn't doing that for me. It was a hard thing to do because yeah. my coach was my coach and he knew me since I was that young. Mm-hmm. So like that conversation was like, he, he thought of it more as like a, I want to just stop wrestling because I want to just become a gym bro. Like it wasn't like that. Obviously yeah. I'm here now, you know, yeah. like I have, I had dreams and ambitions, but yeah. I get and it. Whatever. Nothing wrong with just being a gym bro either. Like, you know what I mean? And getting <laughs> huge. Um, that, that's one thing. I mean, like, uh, thinking about it now, like, because I also did wrestling and like thinking about it, like, like being in a weight class sport that we're in now, um, it, during those young years, it's, a, it is a little bit troubling to think about like cutting so much, you know? Um, and so like, I was always like so little that I was like, I could just eat like whatever. And like, you know, and I was always in like the lowest weight class, like, and I was terrible. So no one cared if I didn't make way what weight class I was in. But if you're, if the team is like depending on you to be in a certain weight class, you know, you it, just like in power thing, you get that advantage from cutting into every meat and cutting into like whatever weight class it is. And um, yeah, that might be a little bit difficult. Like, you know, that young age when you're so capable of putting on muscle, kind of like you got to decide, like, am I going to get super jacked and like go the football route or, you know, whatever may, may come after that or, you know, stick with wrestling. So were you like serious enough in football? Did you get offers? Did you compete in school, uh, in college at all? Uh, did you play football? So I, that's the thing. So I actually went to SUNY Corland because I was in contact with the recruiters from SUNY Corland. Um, a lot of other college looks during my senior year, um, I chose not to, you know, just with so many head injuries and, and whatnot going forward, I just didn't think it would be worth it really for my yeah. longevity. Um, so I didn't, I didn't follow through with that. It was kind of like a, like a tough thing, but yeah, obviously there's different routes, you know, and at, at that point of time, I was, so this is another part that you probably don't know, but I competed in, in a bodybuilding show in the past. Okay. So during this part of my life, like football and bodybuilding were like a thing. Like there's okay. a little bit of an overlay, but like, mm-hmm. um, so I competed in my first show my junior year and senior year, obviously following around. That was like when all the college prospects were coming up and whatnot. And I was like, you know what, let's do football, whatever, let's run it up. And then later that year, I was like, you know what, for my head, like, let's not, and let's just continue this bodybuilding path. Like, I, I think I could be successful here. Okay. So that was, wow, that weird, was, dude. I can't imagine you as a bodybuilder for one. Um, that's wild. Um, and wow, like you did a bodybuilding show when you were a junior in high school. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know people get into this kind of stuff this young. Um, that's <laughs> that's crazy. And how'd you do? I mean, did you you like it? You, I mean, you obviously must have liked it because then you kept doing it. How long did you do it for? So I competed just in one show. I mean, I, I leading up to that show though. It was it was years of work. Um, mm-hmm. Not that I like signed up for the show and like it was a show that's every year on the island. So I knew that was going to happen one year, but I picked I like a new a year that I was going to do it. And it was going to be my junior year of high school. But I don't know why it was the year I, and I prepared for it. Um, oh, wow. You guys like one of these things you got it in your head when you were like a freshman or something. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, like, yeah. You saw it and you're just like, dude, I'm assign- I'm going to put it on the calendar three years. I'm doing that. Yeah, it's because I saw some guy at my gym, my old retro fitness. He was a he was a bodybuilding bodybuilding competitor, and I was like, I want to do this. And he was like, Yo, you should do this. Like, this is great. You know, like you gotta do it. And I'm like, all right, you got me. You sold me. I'm doing wow. it. Yeah. So what what kind of? I mean, you saw this dude at the gym, and like that was just your first thing with with uh, wanting to dabble in bodybuilding. You had been doing some stuff before that, like you had saw your grandpa working out and stuff like that as well. But I mean, was there like a thing of like wanting to look good? You know, this is a time like, you know, you're in, you're in high school, you know, everyone knows both, you know, men and women going through high school. It's like a lot of insecurities and stuff like appearances are everything at that age. So was that a big deal of you kind of like getting into the gym and, and 
you know, getting shredded up? The, you nailed it on the head. I mean, obviously we talk about my anxiety and my insecurities and mm -hmm. a lot of them, like a lot of them were, were, I, I kind of hid them with my physique, you know, like I was like being jacked in high school, like you're known as the big guy in high school. Like I was known as the super jacked kid. Teachers knew it, students knew it, you know, like, yeah. and it was a good, it was a good like way for me to kind of just escape from that, like mm -hmm. insecure. Mm -hmm. And not that I need people's validation, but you know, when you get a compliment, it feels good, you know, yeah. and maybe it was an unhealthy way of me going about it seeking validation but it wasn't that it was more of just me liking to escape the fact and be appreciated you know because mm -hmm. i couldn't not to sound a little bad but like i couldn't really appreciate myself in the time so like mm -hmm. it was nice to feel appreciated for something so that Dude, was like think, a huge yeah i mean yeah. i think that's super common at that age like i mean looking back like i said as a, someone that's much older you know and like having seen like younger siblings and and you know just a lot of life in between now and then it's like you see that it's like everyone's going through that stuff in high school man um and so like everyone has a lot of self doubt a lot of like anxiety um it's a lot of insecurities and and appearances and just certainly like you said like you you were using lifting and being the jack dude as sort of like your identity so that you could kind of like hide behind that and everyone does that everyone has a thing and there's certainly like um, much more unhealthy ways than like getting jacked and being shredded and stuff. Like there's certainly a lot more unhealthy ways, you know, different paths that you can take to kind of deal with the insecurities and those kind of things. So it's like, you know, you got a good head on you. You channeled that stuff into something that's like positive, you know, and as long as you do it in a positive, obviously there can be body dysmorphia stuff related to, uh, you know, bodybuilding and whatnot. Like you said, you didn't appreciate your own body, but you know, the teachers all were like, here's Jack Anthony, you know, like don't cross him. <laughs> uh, but like, you didn't necessarily appreciate it, But like you said, it was kind of like a mask that, um, you know, kind of hid that sort of inner self doubt and projected this thing onto the world. Hey, that's there, you know, there's everyone copes with those insecurities in different ways. And so it's like, now you've, I mean, dude, you're still so young. How old are you right now? Like 22? 23. I just turned 23. Just turns, I mean, you, you, you got a lot of this stuff figured out at a very young age. Like it takes people, uh, I think it's very normal for people to deal with this stuff like well into their thirties. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's like, it's crazy because everyone has their own story and mm -hmm. you know, I feel like later in life you learn about these stories because people see that everyone's we're all so interconnected and we see so many of the similar stories, but at the time of us going through that, we nope. feel isolated. We don't know how to nope. express that. So like, it's really interesting to see the other stories, you know, and I, when I kind of share my story, I'm like, this is like everyone else's story, yeah. but it, you know, how it affects you is kind of like where it is your own story. But, yeah. I mean, it, it, exactly. Like you think yeah. it's a hundred percent unique to you and like, maybe there's something wrong with you. Like what everyone else seems to have it figured out. Well, meanwhile, they're looking at you like students and teachers <laughs> basically being like, this kid's got to figure it out. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. so, um, you know, so you never know what someone's going through too, you know? So it's, that's, that's a big lesson um, that we learn as we get older in life as well. So, but Absolutely. yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, you've, uh, so how then did your relationship with bodybuilding evolve? So really, um, like how, how did I like, yeah. Like what? Cause you, you were basically like you, you did a meet, you did a, a bodybuilding show oh. and then, you know, like you kind of turned down pursuing football in pursuit. I sounded like at that time still bodybuilding, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is now my freshman year of college, right? Everything. I'm okay. still doing my thing, my bodybuilding thing. Okay. Uh, I don't have any shows planned out. I actually had like a bad experience with that first show. Um, which kind of drew me away from bodybuilding a little bit, but I was like, you know what? Like, let me compete in a different fed. Like, forget about it. We'll still do this thing. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm at college and I'm doing my bodybuilding thing. And I'm like, this, there was this one corner that you would never, ever go there unless you were a powerlifter, unless you have the SPD belt, the SPD wrist wrap, you know, like the whole yeah, kit, yeah. right? The tripod, you wouldn't go there, right? I never <laughs> would go there. I would never go there because I was like, those people are nuts. Like they're scary, like whatever. Like I'm, I'm good. I got my own space. Uh -huh. And one day, um, he's a good friend of mine now, um, but his name's Luke Graham. 
Um, he used to compete, like he was a pretty top tier athlete in powerlifting, but he's life has taken different ways now. Uh -huh. Um, but he was, uh, he suggested to me, he's like, dude, if you stop doing Cause like I was trying to do strength training cause I was watching them and I'm like, you know, what? I want to do it. So I was doing like everyday maxing out kind of BS. Mm -hmm. Um, so he was like, dude, if you really got on a structure program, you could be awesome in this sport. And I'm like, dude, I just watched you deadlift 705 for two. And you're telling me with like a 455 deadlift that I could be great. Like, yeah, you're crazy. Right. Yeah. I'm sitting here. I'm like. You're nuts. He's like, I'll coach you. He's like, I will coach you. He offers, he offered coaching. So I'm like, you know what? Sure. Whatever. Let's, let's do, it. do it. Let's run it up. And and, and at the time you just kind of, you know, you just gave up on bodybuilding. Then you were just like, yeah, you're just like, I'm in this now. It was literally like, I went from one to the other and I thank God. Yeah, dude. I, I literally don't have any ties to it anymore. I don't even know. Like, where that fire, I don't even think yeah. about it anymore, you know? Um, and it was kind of from like that point that I was like, cause somebody told me that I could, I don't, again, like I, like, I don't want to, like, I don't need someone else's validation, but from someone that I was afraid to approach in the gym, coming up to me yeah. and telling me that I had potential in this sport, if I channeled my energy in the right way, that was like a no brainer, you know, for me at the time. Well, I'm gonna need this dude's address and send him some flowers and some chocolates. <laughs> Luke, I, uh, if you hear this, yeah. bro, thank God for you telling this young man that he could he could be great one day, you know. And it just goes to show, like, dude, now you're on the other side of that. Like you're you're deadlifting these huge numbers and like you're out there like with USA and representing our country, you know, in, on the world stage and stuff like this. And so just imagine like the power that you have now when you're in a gym to see some other young guy or girl out there and be give them one nice kind word, you know, of encouragement, how big of an effect that could have, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I've been seeing a lot more recently, um, a lot of people, different gyms that I go to mm -hmm. like, dude, I follow like, you're awesome, you know? Yeah. And like, it's really cool to hear, but like I was that person at the time. So I think about that every time I have these conversations and I'm like, you could literally do the same thing, yeah. but you don't know that, but you literally can do the same exact thing. So it's yeah. cool to be able to give back and like help people see that. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something. And Luke was that guy for me. Luke was literally like, I'm not saying that my powerlifting career was from him. Like I built it, but he was the person like my grandfather to get me into the gym. He was my person to get me into the sport. And yeah. now I'm here and I thank him all the time. I think he gets annoyed with how much I thank him, but I know he appreciates, appreciates a lot, but like, I thank him all the time. You know, was he after, one like, of the guys in Buffalo? No, no, he actually, um, I actually, even, the last, he handled me at a meet a while back, but that was really about it. But you would, you would really like him. He is, yeah. he's a really, really good dude. You know, he's got cool. a good humor. He's a good dude, but. Well, if we ever see guy. him, you got to shake his hand, give him a hug. Um, if oh, you point him out to me if he's ever around, if we ever see, if we're ever together and he's around, um, because that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's just crazy to think about how much different your life would be like if your grandfather didn't lift and if you, and if you just didn't get that, those words of encouragement from Luke, I mean, maybe it would have came from someone else a week later, could have been someone else. Like you said, it was like, there's something about you too, that draws people to want to give you that encouragement and stuff like that. Like he could see you putting in work. He could see that you were already jacked. Like you've already have a good work ethic. If you're going to be as jacked as you were at that time, you know, stuff like that. You could see the promise in you. Um, like you, you, you sort of make that it's, it's very apparent. Like whenever someone's around you, like we talked about like the hardware store, like, like everyone, you know, who knows you and meets you, like just kind of gets pulled into that gravitational force of like, you're just a good guy with a lot of promise, you know? So um, no surprise that Luke would do that, but, um, but man, thank God he did. Right. I mean, that, that's amazing. Absolutely. 100%. And, it, you know, I think it, like every time I have a meet or every time I'm yeah. doing so, I think, I think about him, you know, I'm like, like yeah. he got me into this. Like, I'm, I'm going to do this for him too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We all have those like, you know, few people here and there in our lives that it's like, you could have went one way or the other. Like you were at a fork in the road and it's like, boom, you went this way because of that person, you know? And it's yeah. like, could have got to the same path a million different other ways, but your path at that time, you were at the crossroads and Luke was like, go this way. And you did. And now look at you. So yeah. it's really cool. Those pivotal moments. Um, so then 
this was like around your freshman year of of university college you were in Cortland, right what what's uh yep. what what is this for people who are outside of new york what school is it what city what's it like where is it at yep so uh suny Cortland, it's in um it's in central new york so people long island people like me we call it upstate but the old the, uh, the entire state doesn't refer to it as upstate it's central um okay <laughs> so suny Cortland's like the town around it it's a very small quiet town um the city light like the, the main strip there's one main strip it's college town that's really the most packed place but everything around it is kind of just like rural and and whatnot um so on top of that suny Cortland's like really good for their athletic programs and like their uh, physiology and that'd be like all that kind of good stuff so like me i went for phys ed okay. um and in the nation i think it's the number one or two ranked nation for the phys ed program awesome. so obviously it's it's a very strenuous program um it, it was great mm -hmm. uh the <laughs> what sold me on it wasn't just the phys ed but when i visited that school i went into that gym so the new york jets uh trained like at that at Cortland for like okay in the X amount of years yes yes okay cool um so they donated a large chunk of money for Cortland to upgrade their gym and now it's called the student life center and it's this crazy big gym if you're visiting you gotta go in there you gotta get a lift in, get the day pass for like five bucks it's unreal it's cool. such a cool gym. It's got hot tubs, pools. It's got like the upstairs cardio area, yoga room with like space lights. It's damn. It's you so made. dope. It's so dope. Wow. So yeah. But yeah, Cortland was was my home. And um to like dive a little more into it, um, yeah. the place that I trained at, you you saw my training. Yeah. Um, you probably noticed how I was on the steel plates and stuff like that and in the Black Ohio Power Bar. That was so it holds a special place in my heart because when I like didn't have like during COVID and stuff, it was kind of like, you know, hard to train around, whatever. Um, yeah. but they provided like resources for me to be able to train when I was up at school, like when things were remote, um, but mm -hmm. I was still on campus. So like I remind performance and fitness I've been going to since I was a sophomore. And that's where most of my core uh my college training was at. So it's it's a special place to me. My buddy Josh Farrar, he like he like runs the place. Um, Aaron Newman, he owns it, but he like also runs a bar in New York City. So he's back and forth from the city up to the. He's a busy guy, but like really good dude, um, badass, and he's just super supportive. And so is Josh. Josh is like one of my best friends. So mm -hmm. between them two, it's just a good good environment, you know. Yeah, man. Part of part of building that community around you, you know, and like um, you got the full on like small college town experience like could be any college town usa kind of vibe like small like the school is the main thing there um awesome facilities and whatnot so like dude that you got in yourself into a good situation now did you go there just for that phys ed program um or were they like was it were they in talks for football stuff or what yeah so it was like it was football and the phys ed like it kind of worked out really nice um and then obviously the the gym i was like Damn. This is the place. <laughs> That's you know? cool, man. Picking out a school a little bit based on the gym. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, the phys ed program is good, but the gym is really nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My first two semesters, I was like living there and I had to really quickly learn that I had to balance a little better. Yeah. Because what, you were just <laughs> living in the gym? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, Dude, I, like, a... I, yeah, I would lift there, but like I would hang out with people after I lifted. I'd be there from like, I get there after classes like four. I leave at like eleven when it closed. Like what? Yeah, what yeah. Heck? Just where yeah. you want to be, man. Like those are your yeah. People. Where did you end up ever getting like a one of those uh, jobs like where you work for the school and like you could work at the gym or something? You could just be there all the time. Or I like actually, that? I actually worked at a at a bar. I bounced um, okay. from my freshman year up until my junior year, like when COVID hit and the bar like closed and it got like weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was a bouncer. So. that's not surprising so many power lifters are like that's a that's a gig that you can pick up anywhere you know yeah 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 that's what i did up there it was it was hectic and, and crazy but it was it was a good time different you know? life experiences being up late at night and stuff like you kind of see the like night crowd a little bit more you know so yeah different yeah, than the gym crowd 
you know, it was always funny because no one really like it, it would be like, oh, my God, you're the guy from the SLC that like lifts a lot of weight. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> that's me. My name is Anthony. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nice. like it, it was funny. You, you know? So even at Cortland, people, you were the big jack dude. Like people were walking around like like they recognize you on the streets as like the dude that there was in the gym for four hours. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the power lifter dude. Someone probably despised me in that gym, but uh, you know, I I had a I had a good rapport with a lot of people in that gym. You know, yeah. there wasn't really anything like I'm I'm just a nice. You know me, I'm a good yeah. person. I'm not like you're nice. Dude. You know, I'm anyone that coachable. doesn't like you, man, something's wrong with them. People uh, are like, oh, I'm like afraid to go up to you. And I was afraid to go up to you, dude. I'm like a teddy bear. If you oh, see yeah. me in the gym, like if you're hearing this podcast right now and you you want to like say what's up, say what's up. I'm a nice person. Yeah, I'm a good person. I'll talk. Absolutely, Jolly Green <laughs> Giant over here, um, for damn sure. Uh, like one of the nicest guys. Um, so then, but how, when did you end up doing your first uh, powerlifting competition? That was February of 20, 2019. 2019. And that was a USPA meet up in Buffalo. So, oh. yeah, it was in Buffalo. Um, oh. That meet. I squatted 562, I benched 402, and then I deadlifted 606. Yeah, 606. Yeah, I got you here. Uh, yep, 606. Damn, you remember your numbers in pounds. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I'm was, not a kilo guy. It was 2020, uh, February. Um, so it was right at right after tw- uh, 2019, the end of 2019. So this must have been like... 2020, right? Yeah, I mean that's what it says on Open Powerlifting at least. 2020, February uh 22nd, 2020. Yeah, you're right. Is, you're right. Just crazy because that was like wasn't that right when COVID was happening? Yeah. Oh, and so yeah. you're one of these college guys too that got, basically got your whole college ruined. Yep. By COVID. Yep. Damn. Unfortunately. Man. But you still yeah. got a little bit of the vibe, right? I mean Oh yeah, for sure. You know what was cool too? Um, like I had at the house that I was living on off campus, we we turned it into a basement gym. So a bunch of guys from my school that power lifted, we all brought equipment up um, and we called it the gulag because <laughs> underneath the platform that we built, there was just rocks. Like it was it was the most uneven platform. Like if you were squatting, like you, you, you knew you were going to be like, whatever, but it was called the gulag. Yeah. And we would just have like, lifts you know like crazy like night lifts the, the girls on the other side that live on the other side are probably so pissed off at us yeah. but um they were cool like they were cool but it was it was fun um not even just lifting like even like you know the things that were able to stay open um like after like the real real lockdown like yeah. it was it was still all right you know like i wasn't yeah. like that pressed i got used to the life i still had fun i still like made memories and yeah you just learn to adapt in that situation in some ways it's better because, you know, with the, the having zoom and having remote options and stuff like that, I mean, it made an already laid back college lifestyle kind of even more laid back and fun too. Right. Uh, right my, about wife's that. A, my wife's a professor and everything. So it's like, it's been, there's been a blessing on both sides. You know, my little sister is like the same age as you. So she went through uh university at the same time. And it's one of those things where it's like some of the weird traditions, like, you know, graduations and things like that got disrupted so that's a kind of a shame and everything. And like, you know, obviously some of the party life, but from what I saw, a lot of the kids weren't really paying too much attention to the COVID restrictions when it came to partying. <laughs> yeah, so that's for sure. And um, then we do have these, these cool bonds, like from this like bunker mentality that we had, you know, like, like I had the same thing where like, I had a home gym, but I was training hard at a, at a regular gym, you know? And so like the crew was able to come to my place you know, when the serious lockdown was happening, like totally illegally, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, but you know, and just, we, we were all able to get our lifts in. we were like wiping stuff down with bleach. Like we didn't know anything. Like, I mean, it's a weird thing to have gone through. Like you have that bond with the people that you went through it with, you know? Right. So, I mean, right. it's a different kind of memory. It's not the traditional college thing, but it's like a different kind of like trauma, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so when, what, this was 2020 when you did this meet. So was that like how long and after you had, you know, met with Luke and stuff and decided you're doing power thing, did you jump into that? Three months. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Three months. So it was like, I want to do the meet, you know, cause then I started picking up on the powerlifting culture. I started following trends and yeah. I saw that people like 
did all these meets and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? My turn. Let's see what we do. And, nice. And yeah. the first meet being in Buffalo. And um, was that at Vin's gym or where was it a different place or? It was at uh it was at Niagara Fire Department, I think, or something. Oh, interesting. Like that. I, I might oh. have that completely wrong, but it's at, it was at a fire department. So it was actually a pretty cool venue. It was very like it wasn't it wasn't like cool with the lights, you know, like it, yeah. it was just like it was nice though because it was big and open and the yeah. ventilation was like it was good because I was sweating and I would just go out, I would just walk out out of, out of the back room and I'd be like, ah, we're good, you know. Yeah. And that's February in Buffalo can be quite cold. <laughs> so when this yeah. man says he was sweating, <laughs> hopefully I they don't have sweat. junior worlds anywhere too hot uh, in the coming years. Uh, Cause I think you got a couple years as a junior still, right? I have just this last run. Okay, cool. So Romania. Cool. Won't be too sweaty. Yet. Hopefully let's fingers crossed the AC works and everything and it'll oh, be September. Geez. But then, okay, so kind of take us through, like, um, you did another meet, it looks like about, you know, in July of that year, then another meet July the following year, kind of do one a year after that, before coming over and switching into PA. Yes. So that was when I transferred over to the USAPL. Um, I believe the first meet you're seeing is the Avenger Athletics meet. Yeah. I think yep. it'll say Avenger. Yes. That meet was in, P, in PA, right next to like Hershey area, Hershey Park area, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um but that meet, so like now, here we go. Like I'm full fledged, like into this powerlifting stuff, and I'm like, yeah. you know, like I'm really strong. But I'm now finding out about other people that are my weight. You know, it's becoming more of like a, a realization, right? I'm throwing, I'm now being thrown into the mix of other people. Yeah, and I'm finding out that there's a lot of talented people, and not that I was like that. I wasn't like just closed off and blind to the fact. Like I knew it was there, but I just was like really wrapped in my own personal growth. Um, but now here I start getting competitive. So this meet um, was kind of like that crossover from like, you know, doing it personally and, and yeah, competitive, but like at a local like range, this yeah. meet was kind of like kicking to overdrive. Let's start picking it up because now um, I've, I'm seeing people like Sean Mills, Wheeze um, mm -hmm. in my weight class. He's, he's squ squatting crazy numbers, doing crazy things. And I'm like, you know what? Like I have people to beat. Um, so that me was like the, the transition. Yeah. Um, following though, like, I think I squatted 606 there. I think I bench 420. So 606 is what? 270. I, yeah. I don't even know the kilos. So yeah, yeah. You, you squatted 606 and that is 275. 275. Okay. Bench okay. 424, which is, I don't even 192.5. I got, I got you all in kilos. Thank you. And uh, 295 you. on your, on your deadlift. Yes. Appreciate it. That was actually another thing. So that 295 deadlift, um, that was like, uh, I think my best pull that, that prep was like 605, 610. Yeah. So 290 and, is 650 for people. who. Yeah. Are, yeah. So like, oh, wow, you pulled a huge deadlift out. <laughs> wow. So yeah. you had an early yeah. kind of indication that maybe the taper does you well, especially when it comes to deadlift. Right. Right. And, um, I mean the squat, I squat 605 that prep. So the deadlift was like, again, kind of like this, this last culture, this shock that I had, it was kind of like that same thing. I'm like, wow, I just did that, you know? Um, but yeah, that was really that neat. It was kind of just like that, that pivotal moment for me where I started now plunging into the competition side of things now following people, um, and seeing, well, I mean, that's when powerlifting had kind of taken a little pause, like during COVID, like there wasn't meets, gyms were closed, you know, like, like I remember even myself, I kind of just zoned in on my own training in the garage. And I wasn't really paying attention to a lot of like what was going on in the, in the sport as a whole. Cause it was, it, there wasn't anything going on. Like it was, it was stopped, you know, international travel U S we could still do so a little bit, but like in a lot of other countries, there was no IPF stuff. Um, so then coming out of that lockdown, like you said, it's like July, um, you do this meet powerlifting's revving back up too, like right around the same time as you. So that's like a perfect time to be kind of getting back into it. Cause I think everyone kind of came back in with like a, a renewed enthusiasm. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's when I was starting to find out like these, these things, you know, I, that's when I was like first learning really what the sport was about, like competitive wise. Um, I don't even think, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really follow the IPF at that time. Like, I didn't really know what the IPF was. I was still 
onto that local national level. I wasn't really going out past there. I wasn't looking there because I just wanted to really step up on a national platform someday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was that. And then following that, that meet, um, training was going really well. Um, but this is where Luke, you know, different things came up in his life and he, and he had to stop the coaching aspect of things. I okay. did not drop Luke. I no falling out. Obviously we're, I'm like, he's like my brother. Um, yeah. But he switched paths, and John was coaching him. John Song was coaching him, and this is how I met John Song. John, wow. John, John always shadowed Luke, um, Luke's coaching, and kind of like kept tabs on Luke's lifters because that's like what you do as like a grandfather coach. Yeah. Um, but so he, John knew of me. Um, I knew of John, and John instantly took me on. You know, he adopted me. He took me under his wing, and I felt so good about that because I didn't want to, have to look for a coach. I didn't want to have to go through a big name that you know, a big roster and, and just be put onto it. Like I wanted like that personal coaching that I got from Luke and John gave that all to me. So um, switching gears, like, you know, his style of training, his methods, like it was all different, but it was all great stuff. I was like, you know, he like caught me and saved me. And it was like, I got you. Like you're under my wing now. Welcome to the Dude, team. That's, that's again, it's like you attract like the best people to, to you, Anthony, like really you do. And I mean, what, so is John, was was he around Cortland or like where's he based or was he he's somewhere in New York right? Yeah, so John actually lives on the island like I do. Um, okay. He does like his PT home care and like um, all that stuff around here. Then obviously he has his online athletes and and whatnot. Um, but at that time, John's roster was a little sm was smaller than it is now, um, and so it was it was cool because like not that I was like. OG team song, but like kind of, you know, like before yeah, like yeah. he really started picking up. Like he still had a good amount of athletes, but like it, it was cool to see um his progression like to this point. But John went to school at the University of Buffalo. So again, bring it back to Buffalo. So like oh. I, I believe he actually trained at, at Vin's gym a couple of times, um, you know, just being a student there and whatnot. So it's cool how everything ties back to Buffalo, man. Like yeah, Buffalo man, is literally meet, the spot. Your last meet. I mean, <laughs> God forbid. I mean, one day you got to retire in Buffalo. It sounds like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, Buffalo is the, is the place. Yeah. Um, but so John went to school there and, and now he's back on the Island. So that's really where he is. It's just, um, that's cool, it's just that. super convenient. So like in the summers when you would be back from Cortland and stuff, like you could get some training in person with him and stuff. And, Oh, that's, that's huge, man. A lot of people don't have that. You know, they don't, they, they meet their coach like at nationals for the first time in person. So right. that's a huge, that's huge to have him sort of like in your backyard. And now obviously you guys can link up whenever. Yeah. Um, so was that next meet the uh, barbell and Brian summer classic that was 2021. It was basically damn near exactly a year later. And dude, I mean, you put like 70 kilos, it looks like, um, I'm bad. I'm notoriously extremely bad at math. Um, we'll Me call too. it 65 kilos that you added <laughs> 67.5. Um, that but works. yeah, uh, and that was John, that was kind of like that, that year that you had taken over with him. And that's yes. amazing. Man. Yes. That was, that was like the, the installation of the John song era, um, that, that off season, you know, I was a lot of technical refinement, um, really just John getting on my case about everything like minute. And it was really frustrating because a lot of my weights are on the back burner. But I started seeing like as we got into that prep, things just popping off, things that I didn't think would pop off were popping off. Uh -huh. And um, it was just insane because, like you said, like I, I told my PR by X amount of kilos, I mean, on that meat right there was like now i had like like some of the bigger names in the sport like people that i look up to like i remember sean noriega like tapped into that post and i was like mm -hmm. what like no way you know freaking out like um bigger names starting to tap in and starting to follow me and like you know whatever it was just like cool to see that now like my people that i would look to and look up to and whatnot are now tapping in to, to so me that that was the 830. That was the 830 total. Um, so people, I think, kind of know totals and kilos as far as uh, the weight classes are concerned. 
that's a good, that's a really good total. You know, um, that's, that's a competitive total. That would have been co competitive at junior worlds, you know? So, and that was your third meet <laughs> and you're still yeah. a young man. Like, so that's, that's a big sign of things to come. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, like big signs of, of things. Yeah. Big signs of things to come like that yeah. was what that meet was. Um, and you know, like we after that meet, John told me that, he's like you still have so much potential to tap into that you don't you have no idea that you that it's even there like you don't even know what you could do and like again the luke story like luke saying that i had all this potential right now i just have another person in my corner telling me that i have x amount of potential that i haven't even tapped into you know and i was at a point where i was with john for so long so now he knows my training trends you know how i how i respond to things like he knows me better than obviously yeah. Um, when we first started, but like he knew me enough to like know that I have a lot of potential to tap into, and um, yeah, man, like that's when like that's when like things were getting real. Like I was like, all right, like we're we're in it now. Like throw me in, like what's good? And um, I remember seeing like you know like a big person that held me like to keep pushing um competitively was uh sean mills wheeze again going back to sean mills um i would just you know just see him you know he would total this out of me and i'm like all right gotta bump you up he like kept me on my toes so it was like a good thing to like have and then finally like we you know we became acquainted on social media and stuff like that but before that like i would follow him whatever and i would see like his his post and his training and like it kind of like kept bumping me up um but it was good it was like a good little yeah. competitive thing that I had that's that's so cool to hear that again it's like you never know who you're inspiring like like he's he's out there doing his thing posting like becoming like a social media star like obviously str super strong putting up huge numbers and stuff and he's inspiring a whole new crowd of lifters you know yeah and he doesn't even know like he doesn't even know you like this might be the first time he's ever heard that that you he was a big inspiration to you and like you know and yeah. in a good way too because that's another thing it's like that's what's cool about you is like social media can be so negative. Like people could, you could have been like, you know, I saw Wheeze and then I was just like, so jealous that I just like quit powerlifting forever. Right. Like thought like, I, there's no way I can ever do what he's doing. And no one cares about little old Anthony with no followers. And Wheeze has like a billion. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. you could have been, you could have taken it in such a negative thing. And like, that's, that's one of those things where it's like social media isn't necessarily the problem. I mean, it can be for sure, but but it's also like how you use it, you know, it's like, so you use it in a positive way. You found someone out there that's like kind of on your level, you know, and that you could compete with even just in your own head, even if he doesn't know he's competing with you. Right. Exactly. And I don't think like we knew, like he knew that until like you saw me throw up that 830 total. I think that's when like, he like started seeing me. Um, yeah, like people in the comments are like, at peace, look out for this guy. You know, just like, just yeah, like yeah, funny yeah. things like that. Like it, it was, you know, funny. I love um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But now, now we chat from time to time. It's cool. You know, it's, it's good to have people that are going to just keep pushing you. Like, yeah, it's, it's a, I won't even lie. It's a pain in the butt sometimes because I'm like, yeah. dude, get yourself together. It's annoying and it's yeah. frustrating, but it's good. It's a healthy way to keep pushing your limits. Um, and kind of like a slap, a slap in the ass, you know, when you need it, like, just like a wake up. Yeah. And, and also just to remember, like, like you f being in your shoes, then it's like, there's someone out there that's following your training now and they're getting inspired by it. And they're thinking, Hey, let me, let me, if he can do it, I can do it. You know, he's a kid from Long Island. I'm from Long Island, whatever, you know, he went to SUNY school. I went to a SUNY school, whatever it is. <clears throat> and so it's also a, a thing to remind you that even though like there's so many times when like social media is a pain in the ass, like I know you went through a phase where you were like really pumping out content a lot, YouTube, Instagram and everything, TikTok, right? And it, it's, it can be a job and it can become something that can really wear you down and like can really become like, like a chore to handle, you know, but you got to think back to like, there's some young Anthony out there that's like seeing your super Mario brother outfit <laughs> on, on YouTube. And they think that's the coolest thing ever. And then they see, Oh my God, he went to Turkey and he's a, he's, you know, like a, a world silver medalist. We'll say, or what I keep wanting to say world champion, but, um, world silver medalist, you know, but what, whatever, but you know, but that 
that can be the thing, you know, they, they start off by seeing one thing, Mario brothers thing or whatever. And then they, they see, Oh, look. And then there's this whole path. So yeah. it's just one of those things that keep pushing, you know, even though it can feel like a pain in the ass, it's like you, you, you're doing something good by just being who you are and putting that out there. You're inspiring people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I always think about that. You know, I don't need to inspire thousands. So, you know, if one or two people were like, you, you got me to do this, that, that would make my entire, and I've had that happen and I'm having it happen. And it's so freaking cool to see. Yeah. But it's, it's hard to like tell people that you can literally do the same thing. Cause they, they, they kind of put you on this pedestal. Like I'm not like realistically, like again, hardware store, right. It's a college kid in the gray area of my life. Yeah. I'm just a normal person. Yeah, I'm just, totally. I'm just, I'm just tapping into my passion. I'm tapping into my, my potential. So tap into that potential for yourself, whatever that may be, you know, I'm not like a preacher. I'm not like, I don't know everything in life, but I, what I do know is, is if you really put a hundred percent effort into what you want to do, you could do it. And I'm showing myself that now with the sport, that's like the biggest thing lately. Like I've been showing myself time after time, after time in Turkey, right. I could have easily bombed out on my third squat. No, yeah. you know, I said, let's go. Like I'm up to the challenge. Like, yeah, today's not my day. But I'm not, I'm not backing out. Like I'm not backing down. I'm going to put up a fight and I'm going to, I'm going to come here. I came here to do something. I'm still going to do it. And I came back and I, and I got my third squat, you know? Mm -hmm. So tap into that potential. 100% man. And just keep going too. you know, like, like, especially like with you, man, I just want you to just keep going. Um, but let's, so let's talk about this. Like you <clears throat> do that meet where you total 830. That was like July, uh, 2021. So then one year later again is PA Nats in Orlando. What was, what went into your decision, you know, from, from, uh, doing that, that last local meet to then picking power of team America for your first nationals. Yes. So this is where now I started, obviously you could see in my just choice of like federations, um, and whatnot that I wanted to, to get to eventually that world stage. Like this is where I wanted to like be on that junior world stage. And I'm like, okay, this is the route in powerlifting America, obviously tied with the IPF and whatnot. Um, I was like, let's do it. I told John about it. I was like, this is what I want to do. And he's like, let's do it. Um, it was kind of a simple conversation like that. There wasn't really any, anything to it except for, all right, you're in it now. Like now we got to work. Um, I signed up for that meet for, for nationals. And I remember a couple of weeks out, the you, you gave me a shout out with that 683 squat. Okay. And I was like, all right, this is cool. You know, whatever. But like, yeah, on the yeah. grand scheme of things, like that's where I really wanted to take it to the next level again, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of funny because I didn't do like USAPL nationals. I didn't do yeah. like, any of those like national meets. You know, I, I could have, I should have, would have, whatever that's, that's done deal. Like I obviously did my own route now, but this was like kind of my debut for that. Like this was my yeah. national stage debut. So, 100%. um, it was really cool. It was really exciting. Um, and I realized like from that national stage platform, I can now take it into something else. I could take it to that world stage platform. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can really get myself out there. And that's really the decision that I made was just get myself to that next level. Again, just always upping the standards, upping in and just going and just tapping into potential. Um, and that's where I also like, like signing up for like for nationals. Um, I kind of was like, this can now be the start of like my era. Like this could be the McDouble thick era now. Like I <laughs> want it like, you know, like, yeah. Everyone else has their story, you know. I, I, I everyone's making their own paved way in this in this sport, and I I want to bulldoze through. I want to make my own. I want to have a two lane road in these little web crossroads. I want to plow through everything. I want people to be like, wow, like this guy, like you know, he he built yeah. himself up. Like you know, whatever whether it's open powerlifting, and they see it just how I progress there. If they hear yeah. this podcast, or I want people to see like that. They could do it, but I also want to like show myself that I can, and I'm yeah. I'm doing that, dude. So tell tell us a little bit more about that meet. Um, you total eight sixty, so another thirty kilos on your total, which is just these 
Like, I mean, it's a little more common with juniors and stuff because you guys are still growing and whatnot. But right. um, <clears throat> these are some serious gains that you're adding on. And now, you know, you're talking 860. You're talking in open level type of numbers now at this point, you know. Um, yeah. And so, and also at this meet, um, which we're talking about junior nationals in Orlando last year, it was your third meet in a row going nine for nine as well. So you're showing, you're stringing together some big totals. You're improving a lot. You're going nine for nine. You're having consistency. You're, you know, holding yourself to a standard. How did you uh, end up finding Susie Gary to handle you at that meet? John, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> John did. He was like, don't worry. I'm going to find you somebody good, real good. I'm like, okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks, man. Like, appreciate you. Yeah. He text me. He goes, Aunt, hey, you'll never believe who I got. And I'm like, who? And he told me it was Susie. And I'm like, and that's just Pete. What? What? And Are you knew serious? you knew of her? Yeah. Cause like, yeah. obviously, I've like followed like Magari and all them and like all the posts and just like, just mm-hmm. learning, soaking up information. I'm just like, oh my God, this is awesome. Yeah. So then we all hopped on a call. You know, I, I kept up with my training. Um, and so she had a really good picture of what was going to happen on the day and what we're going to do on the day. Um, but the conversation, the, the, the little WebEx or the Zoom we had was a pretty, pretty fast, concise Zoom because us three were just on the same wavelength. Like we, Susie knew what we wanted to do, what we needed to do. John kind of delivered it. And, and that was that. And I was like, this is happening. Like, this is, this is it. This is going to wow. be so sick. Like we're locked and loaded, baby. It's time to go. That's so amazing. Like I came into it, you know, barely knowing you, I saw some of your lifts, you know, on social media and stuff like that. Um, I knew that you were definitely like the person to watch in the one Oh fives. Um, you know, just because I had seen some of your, your big training lifts and stuff like that. So I knew that I was going to like yeah. cover you and like, try to like, you know, make reels about you and whatnot from the meet and everything. And then when I get there and you've got Susie with you, I'm just like, Oh shit, it's on. Like, this guy's the real deal. <laughs> Like, like he's smart. He obviously, you know, he's got a good coach. He like, I mean, got a good game day coach. So he's like, obviously made some smart choices, you know, and stuff like this. And so I'm like, I walked away from that meet. Definitely. Like you said, the effect that you wanted to have is exactly the effect that you had on me, which was like, boom, this guy is on the scene now. Like you are like a name brand now, you know, it's like, like you household name is what I meant to say. <laughs> That's another, I, I get my cliches mixed up. Uh, but yeah, you're like, you're like a household name now, you know? And then of course, like, I'm like really looking forward to seeing like what you're going to do at, at junior worlds. So like, there was a lot of hype. There was a lot of like, um, anticipation and stuff like meeting, you knowing how good of a, a guy you are. And like, it, it, you can't help but want to root for you, you know? And, um, so then take us into Turkey junior worlds. Like how was the whole process? Like, like, cause there's some things. So start off by just kind of telling us like you know getting there you know like because i know you guys flew out like as a team and stuff i think and then you guys bonded like you got the boys now like like you got the turkey boys right so like yeah. like yeah just give us a like set the stage for us a little bit of, like what it was like there in turkey okay so the the plane ride i'm sitting yeah. next to yaya Farrell lifter and shane nut right so it's us three going down there the arm space was just like between us three. It was like, you know, I was sitting here like this. I got off yeah. the plane. I'm like, there's no way I'm benching 500 pounds. As me. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But the flight was, you know, we stayed up for the flight. Um, well, Shane stayed up the entire time. Yeah, yeah, I fell asleep for like God knows how long. I don't even know he fell asleep until I like had to go to the bathroom. Um, but I like took like a cat nap. But the, the ride was pretty good. It was really boring. Uh, yeah. 11, 11 and a half hours. I mean, that's something that I was kind of nervous about because one, I was water cutting. So I had to pee a yeah. lot. So I was having anxiety, like at the airport, I'm like, I got to like get a bathroom, man. I got to have, uh, I have to have something close, you know, yeah. but it all worked out fine. Um, I kind of just like whatever. Um, but the plane ride there, like once we started getting over, like once we were like 20 minutes out from landing, like something just like in my brain just like clicked like dude you're here now you know like you are here and so let me give a little flashback um a couple weeks so my training prep from Nats to junior worlds was honestly probably some of my most immature lifting i'm not even going to lie 
Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we saw the depth display at Worlds. Um, I even had Chance Mitchell, you know, telling me and advising me about depth going into that meet. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Chance because I appreciate him for, for giving me that toughness. Uh, yeah. And obviously, I, I found out the hard way, but he was, you know, rooting for me. So um, my training was a little immature on my squats. Yes, everything was so strong. I was blowing up. I was going, you know, going nuts. Um, kept my training on the low, obviously. But again, the standard, right? I kind of let the numbers, I was following like a little bit of Coco's training and I'm just like, I got to just beat this guy. You know, I'm going to my sessions. I'm in and out, just like beating the hell out of myself. I mean, like you should, some of my sessions were like, you can go in the room and like, you would just, you'd probably want to leave because it was just such a serious, like nothing was happy, you know? Yeah. Um, because whenever I'm like in on something like that, I'm a hundred percent, like I'm very like flip the switch kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Um, so training was like, I thought it was going really well, but obviously, um, we found on the day, um, I mean, bench and deadlifts popped off, but that's besides the point. So anyway, yeah. like I had a little bit of a hiccup a couple weeks out, like three, four weeks out. I had a little bit of like a back strain in my lower back. Mm -hmm. So John being the miracle that he is and being a PT got me through with like literally two different exercises he programmed for me, um, just to do every, every day, twice a day, got mm -hmm. through that just fine. But it was kind of like a scary little turbulent, um, run, but anyway, now we're back here, right? So yeah. I did all my training. I'm sitting here really confident because I hit these numbers in training, right? Um, I'm like, oh, like, this is my time, like amped up. You know, we're in the airport. We're meeting now. The, the team is congregating. So me, Shane, and Yaya, we are now finding other teammates um, and getting together at the airport, seeing who the, the PA team is. Um, and it was cool because we had a huge group chat on Instagram. I remember that group chat? Yeah, yeah. Um, between the equipped and the raw and the equipped people were telling us yeah, it's hot. It's so yeah. hot. Cause they were there oh. like, a, a, like almost a week before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I kept that in mind too, because I can't sleep when it's hot. I cannot sleep. For, I don't care. I'm not Same. bringing my, I'm not sleeping on the balcony. I can't do that. I need to be in a bed and I need it to be cool. So I was freaking out cause it was hot there. Um, but anyway, it was just like cool to see like places to go and whatnot. Like that was what I was tapping into when we first got there. I was able to get yeah. back on my phone. Um, but I got on a call with my friend that was handling my, my water cut, Tom Magarelli, um, really, really good coach and just great friend, but he's like the water cut guru has done handle my water cuts and say the least, obviously he does it, does it very efficiently. Yeah. Um, but I got on the call with him and he was like, this is like the plan. Like, this is what we're going to do. You're going to be this weight by this day. You're going to be this weight by this beat day and then you're gonna be like set to, whatever like the plan was just like in set so now i'm here at the airport and you know you kind of like when you're shooting the shit with people and just like talking you're you're not really thinking about the meat yeah. um so i kind of like let that slip my brain i was kind of soaking in the sights you know seeing all the crazy like buildings and just it was cool it was really cool different way of life yeah. um but yeah, I mean, the environment was just getting to that hotel um, and seeing all the other lifters, right? Like seeing all the other countries together, um, rolling in with my crew. Like it was, it was, I was proud to walk in with my crew, you know? Like it was like, yeah. what's up? Like Team USA, we're pulling up together. Like, um, <laughs> I love that, yeah, dude. Yeah, and, yeah. And, it's, and it's I mean, cool. were you... Did you know, I mean, you, you knew those guys from Orlando, from nationals, that was about it. Or had you met them before? That was about it. Um, yeah. I really wasn't even at nationals. I didn't even really make any other friends. I mean, I talked to Grant Iverson a little bit and Yaya, that was about it. Um, I didn't really even see much of Shane. Yeah. Shane Nutt. Um, didn't see much of Alex Alarte. Um, but yeah, you guys were on separate platforms. I remember you were in the middle yes. and they were on the side. Yeah. I remember that. So you weren't really able to hang out too much. Right. Exactly. So this was like our time to hang out and going into this, like we were like friendly, we were cool. Right. Like, I, you know, but like on the way back, like there's like a bond that, that we've made just from that short trip. Yeah. Like I'm going to, like, I'm going to, you know, like, see Shane and the other guys over the summer, like 
the yeah. bond that was that was formed from that is just uh unreal yeah. you know unreal like now like these guys we talk all the time every week you know i haven't even i before nationals i wouldn't even talk to them once i wouldn't even think twice about it yeah um shane i used to follow his training when i first started powerlifting seeing how crazy he was you know yeah. like just wanted to be like that and now he's like my good friend like mm -hmm. it's just so cool um but yeah like getting there and realizing that this is this is now we're getting closer to game time this is cool this is the hotel i walked in i was like this is the hotel where i'm gonna make my first world's debut like i'm gonna be here i'm gonna be lifting hundreds of pounds in that basement yeah. right underneath me like it was just a cool realization yeah and rolling in like with with your boys and stuff and <clears throat> you guys weren't super cemented in the bond at that point but still it's, it had to feel good like you knew shane like he he seemed to kind of be like the older more experienced person of the crew in general and so kind of cool to have him you know there with you like he knows what he's doing he knows a lot of people in the industry and whatnot so it's like really cool to roll in with him and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I was watching all of it and I was like, damn, I wish I was there with those guys. You guys are like having a hell of a time. It was a blast. And then like to see you guys have the friendship and like hang out, like Shane came out uh, to the, the meet in Buffalo, your last meet that you did. Right. And so like, yep. we all got to hang and stuff. And it was just cool to see like, this is like real life, you know, it's like real life bond now. And um, I just love that for you guys. It's, it's really awesome. Like you guys will always remember that as like your first for you, especially, you know, like your first world. I don't know if it was Shane's first, but I probably. I think, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. So, but yeah. And then now we'll see you guys are aging to open and then like, you'll be seeing each other and like the open battles and the open flights to wherever and stuff. And, and they don't yeah. make the open team, like book all their flights together. They, everyone does their own thing, but I'm sure you guys will be doing like, Hey, we're booking our flights together. <laughs> 100%. Like those are, those are my guys. Now we, we, you know, we were lost together and we were, yeah. we found our way together. Shane, like you said, was, it's funny how you could see that too yeah. like how you could just point that out that he was like the dad figure he was yeah. he was taking care of us like uh shane like do i need this or that no just take this out like that's all you need anything you ask shane had it like i would go to him like about everything i'm like yeah shane like can you like help me with yes i got you you know like he was just he very, calm. very calming calming presence very knowledgeable yeah yeah that's what it is i was like i feel like in good hands right now i guess yeah. this, this is good so it was really good to have shane um, with the travels and everything like that. I felt a lot more comfortable going down with these guys because if I were to go by myself, like, yeah, I'd be fine. But like, it was just a lot nicer knowing that I was able to meet up with these people. You know, that's, that's one thing I see with the junior uh, and sub juniors that, you know, like when I heard about this, like you guys are like all booking flights together and you kind of had to go through the team. I was like a little skeptical or whatever, but then it ended up being kind of a cool thing. Like it ended up working out pretty well, you know, um, so, yeah. So I think, I think it, like, cause you have this bond and then now I'm seeing like with the open team, a lot, there's a, it's a big pain in the ass, like everyone booking, you know, 16 different flights and like 16 different arrival times and stuff. And it's like, it's kind of cool that you guys all kind of came over in like two or three flights, the whole team. And you get that yeah. more of a team bond kind of vibe as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's exactly what that was. Um, yeah. So like just being at that hotel, um, it was I got really, I was always like, this is, this is going to sound funny, but I was like, all right, like, where's Coco? I need to see this. I need to like, you know, like, where is he? You know? Yeah. Um, but it was, it was really cool to like, just see everyone else from different countries come and like knowing that everyone else has the same, the same goal, probably a lot of people have the same goal. Um, I mean, as a team, obviously collective goal, but obviously mm -hmm. you look around the room and you see like each one of these people have like a different a different story a different reason why they're here and it's like i'm in but the they, right place but they all have like the same goal of like put the up as much goal. weight as they can you know yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. tell us about oh go ahead oh no no no, no. i was just agreeing sorry oh uh, tell us about coco like like how you looked at him you know going into the meet and everything like that because this is gonna be your biggest competitor you know spoiler alert he he won um but but um so um w you know what how are you looking at him going into it you know because he was coming off of south africa he was coming off of open worlds right um which was only like a couple months before i believe it was only like maybe even like eight weeks out or something like that um from from junior worlds so how are you you, you watched him at, in in south africa or did no you I, I, I watch it 
No? Didn't even budge. I really didn't even budge. Um, that's probably not a, a good thing, but I, I knew that Coco at the end of the day had a lot more experience under his belt. And yeah. I, I was like, you know what? Like I'm going to be in for, for, for a good run. And obviously, you know, the outcome, um, mm-hmm. but I knew that I could, I could, I have a shot. It's not like it's such an out of range thing. If I show up, I could do this. And in the time, you know, I was thinking pretty confidently of myself to be able to execute the way I did in training. Um, and I hate to even say this, but looking at it now, I could say it comfortably and not in an angry way or remorseful, regretting way because I've learned from it. But yeah. I didn't hold myself to to a standard that I should have held myself to. And I don't blame anyone else for that but myself, you know? Yeah. Um, and seeing like Coco do all these meets, right? And, you know, yeah, there was like a, maybe a stagnant total that I saw, whatever, from, from Coco. But that doesn't mean anything because mm-hmm. obviously I found out that the standards at IPF Worlds, they're just the world's judging in general. is just a different ball game. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, like looking at him, right? Like I'm just like this guy has experience. Like he he's comfortable here. Like this is this is his territory. He's been here many times. He's yeah. put himself in very uncomfortable situations, competing with people that are you know older than him in the open class um, that have more experience. He knows this is comfortable for him, so he's going to be in routine. And I got to match that. I got to like, I got to have that confidence. I got to have that aura. I got to like be mm-hmm. confident with myself. So. Um, you know, I wasn't, I didn't really see him before, before the meet. I didn't see him at all. Um, but, you know, I, not that I was, I'm never afraid of anyone or anything, but I was like, this is the guy, like, I've never really had someone give me a run for my money the way that he was posing. Right. So I was yeah. like a little, like, he's walking on me a little bit and I don't like this, like, get off me. You know, so I took it a little personal, like in a very like obviously respectful manner. Yeah. Light, you know, play in the warm room, but I took it competitively um to heart. So I'm like, I'm here and I want something and I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to get it. And if you're gonna beat me, you're gonna have to beat me. Like you're gonna have to work for it. Yeah. Um, so that was just the mentality about that. I it's didn't kinda, let yeah. kind of like he's got something you want. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like he has something it. that right. And you know. The day of the meet, I I saw him with his crew, his 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 camera crew, and all this, and and I'm like, yeah, like he, this is like his his zone, you know. He's ready to to put out because I know from South Africa, um, that he wanted to kind of like, you know, have a better meet, and so I I I knew that he was going to put on a show, and um, you know, I had even some other lifters tell me like on the 105s, like, hey man, like you, like I don't even know they knew me. But they were like, listen, man, like you have a chance to take this guy out. You got to do it. You got to take it. You got to just take this guy out. Who is that? So, like Michael Davis or someone? Or like, was it other U.S. or was it people no, there in Turkey? No. Um, actually, so my my buddy, Yaya, that's on the, that was on the news team, obviously. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. His friend from Egypt, uh, I forgot his name, really down to earth guy, such a good guy. But he was actually talking to me about it. He's like, you got to you gotta beat him. I'm was like, he there? <laughs> was he there at the meet or? Yeah, he was competing too. He's a very strong guy too. Cool. Um, but it was cool, you know, and yeah. I know I was amped up, I was fired up. And I know I'm gonna see him again this year. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so ready. I'm literally, Paul, like I'm sorry, I'm getting like a little like it's awesome. It's all I think about every day, every single day. I think about just getting back on that platform. I think about what I could do, the lifter that I am. And what I displayed last year. And that's not me, you know? What is me though is bouncing back from the from from almost bombing out of squats. That that's me, mm-hmm. but not the initial display. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were shocked and and in my performance on that day. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You live, you learn, you get over it. Um and uh yeah, man. Uh yeah. Hey, so um, let's let's just go through it a little bit here. So um, you ended up he ended up totaling eight ninety five. Um, he had total eight sixty five in South Africa. He obviously had a good bounce back performance. He did goes 
puts up a pretty good performance. I think he still went seven for nine. He, he, he was vulnerable. Like, um, definitely after I remember he missed his second bench and I was like, Oh shit, Anthony can come back here. He's got a big bench. You know, I was like, I was like, maybe this could happen. Cause Coco, he had DQ'd from a couple meets bombed out or something. I, I, I don't recall. I know he had, he got sick or he was sick for some meets and he's done a ton of competition. So when you've done that many competitions, you've kind of seen everything. You know, right. like you've seen great meets, you've seen terrible meets. And, and so, <clears throat> but anyway, he finished 895, you finished 862.5. So, you know, your total um, actually went down or it went up only by two and a half kilos, um, which for you, you were, you were making progress of like 30 plus kilos every meet. So that had to feel pretty weird only getting two and a half kilos more, but tell us like what was going on with you. You miss your opener on squat. Um, you come out, you miss your second, like, I know Vin was handling you, um, Vin, who's now going to be an assistant coach on the, uh, U S national team for the juniors. He was handling you. Like, what was, what was going through your mind? Like, what was he telling you? What were you thinking about? Like to try and go out there and like, get on the board on squats. Yeah. So the, the first, after the first squat, I, uh, I knew instantly. So I knew instantly what what are you doing like i i knew that it, it that that squat i've never squatted that high in my life i've even with my subpar training standards that i had in that world's prep that whatever i was like what the hell was that you know and, and so was john john was kind of like dude what let's just lock it in the second and then we'll bump to our third he messaged um, you so, or he was messaging Vin or something yeah he messaged me so he was like what the hell is that whatever move forward let's go just bury the second i go out on the second and again i like found myself in the same like just moving pattern the tempo was off everything was off and i just couldn't for some reason get down i don't know i, I really don't even know i think i was so nervous because uh -huh. i was i was so so nervous and i let the nerves get to me on those squats um so again the second one same thing and at this point I, I looked at the board, the the red lights, and I'm just like, listen, man, you have two options here. You bomb out or you get this third. Um, the initial plan was to just go to 320, 705 um, because I wanted to obviously stay in within realm in the fight. And that, yeah. that realistically to this day, I wish that was the case Um because 672 and 705 are very similar in feel for me. So regardless, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. But the decision was to stay at 305. Um, and that's what we did. And I, it doesn't even matter because literally the entire time I was sitting there, I was closing my eyes and I'm just like envisioning myself, just feeling it, just like feeling the squat going over in my head, thinking of my family at home, thinking of my friends, you know, and just thinking about the hard work, the, the, the hours, the, the stress, you know, I'm like, yeah, listen, you got to stay in this meet. Um, so that's literally what I did. And I went out there and I took a deep breath and I was like, let's do this shit. And, and I, and I did it and I stayed in the meet and you can kind of see in the video, my face, I was like, yeah, you, know, you see me like, walking away. Like, cause in, in some ways, I wonder if you think this might be part of the, partially an explanation is like, you were super nervous. Oftentimes when you get really nervous, your breathing gets a little bit messed up. Like you're a little short on breath and then that can cause you to like get in a weird position or not brace properly and like, you know, cut it high or whatever. And then once you already have two missed squats on the board, there has to be at least a little bit of like a sigh of relief in some ways of like, where it's like, I got nothing to lose now. Like, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably not going to win you know, because I'm way behind now, I'm only going to hit this 305. He ended up hitting 327.5. So, you know, you're basically buried, all, you know, at that point. Um, and so maybe there's like a little bit of a sigh of relief or something where it's like, you got nothing to lose and, you know, you can actually breathe right and like kind of, you know, get out of your head a little bit because it's like, you, you're kind of already lost, right? Like that's kind of the mentality to a certain extent is like, it's like 305 isn't going to cut it. We all knew that. And I remember because I was on uh, text with Vin. Uh, and I was just like, I was, I don't know. I don't remember exactly because we had a couple of battles, um, on those last few days with friend, with the French team, um, that were like back and forth. And I don't remember if it was yours or not, but like, 
there was some debate of like, dude, you, you got to load like 320 or something. You got to load something so that he can stay in this. Like he, yeah. you might have to go up because Coco is putting pressure on here with these lifts. And of course we were just praying that Coco would miss that third, you know, and it wouldn't be as big of a gap, but of course he didn't, he, he hit it, you know? So, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like it's, it's always interesting to hear. Like I was just, uh, the previous episode um, was with Zen who was there also uh, in Turkey, um, super heavy on the equip side. And he did the same thing on bench, you know, and it's like, he said he was just as nervous as ever though on the, for the third one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, like you said, man, like at that point, you know, like there, there really wasn't anything to lose at that point, but you know what? Like, I didn't even think that way. You know, I thought to myself uh -huh. that like, maybe I'm just too much of an optimist, but I was like, dude, you're still in this fucking me. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's literally what I said to myself, like word for word. Like that's what I said to myself. Excuse okay, yeah. my, excuse my language, but, uh, yeah. you know, and I was like, this isn't over. Like things, there are so many variables that could happen. Coco could, could miss his freaking opener on bench. Like does, you yeah. know, so like, yeah, in a way, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done for if he has a really good day, but for the most part, I'm not done. So get your ass out there and squat this and get it done. Mm -hmm. like show these people like what's good i go out there i hit 672 like rp5 dude like it literally yeah, was like like on the day i probably could have squatted you know just as much if not probably chipped his squat yeah. um but if what if the ifs not no more this time around you know the, the what yeah. ifs are done i'm just gonna yeah. just gonna do so absolutely happy I mean and you, you've got them on bench, you know, you got a quite a bit bigger bench and then, you know, your, your deadlifts are comparable. I mean, he's got you a little bit on deadlifts, but, but yeah, I mean, you needed, you needed the squat. We all knew the squat was your weapon. Like, I think, I think it might've even been Gavin Aiden was on the commentary. Um, and he was talking about how your squats, your weapon, you know, and how, how we need a big squat and how you're going to squat the world, you know, and all this. And we were all oh, dude. I was like, it was such a heartbreaker. I'm sure it was a heartbreaker for you, obviously worse yeah, than, than, than the spectators, but like we're watching and we're, but I was in the same boat with you where I was like, you never know what can happen after this, you know, like yeah. go out there and make the next six lifts, you know, because yeah. you, you legitimate, like, you don't know, it's not over until it's over, you know, like I'm right. Coco just looking through his, you know, open power thing and stuff had a few I, situations on open power thing, at least where there's squats, benches, and then no deadlifts. So it's like, I don't know what happened. Did he bomb out or did he injure himself or something? But, um, you know, it's not over until it's over. So you never know. And yeah. uh, something could happen on bench when he missed that second bench. Like I said, I was like, Oh, uh -oh cause you have a huge bench. And I was like, if things go good for you on bench, then you could put up, you know, you could get close, put a little pressure and maybe he'll fold under the pressure and you'll be yeah. right there waiting to collect that gold medal. So you made it exciting for us. And uh, like you went out on your shield, like you went out there, you showed a lot of heart to overcome that. Um, it was a cool, thing to experience like as a spectator because it, it it was it was super dramatic like it was it definitely i mean obviously it would have been even cooler if we could have seen you like go toe to toe and come down to the last pull and he misses and you win you know yeah. whatever you know obviously we want that but now we can have that story as like the sequel you know as like the redemption arc that you've been on since this um and it's like you know you're right back to kind of where you were going into nationals last year where it's like you know, you want to come out and just like show the world who Anthony McNaughton is in Scottsdale yeah. and then use that as, as, as a launching point for a junior world championship. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, um, like you said, redemption arc, like, man, I, I have a fire, you know, and a lot of sessions, you know, like for, for example, the other day, I kind of had like a, like a tougher session and, I didn't really have that, like that, that fire, but then I kind of went back and I tapped into that, like, just that feeling, not even just like the thoughts, just the feeling that I had when I missed that second squat, just like, I know how my body felt. I knew like, just like the, the anxiety and like, it kind of put me into like this, this, like, I don't know. I just got, I just got round up I mean, between that and. Yeah, fight or flight between that and just like having Audrey like help, you know, like keep me mentally just locked on point. Um, 
Like she's been really helping me out lately. Like I, I've always been, I'm always like really hard on myself, but she's like, you know, I'm being hard, like, she's helping me be hard on myself, but she's also like, yo, like you got this, you know, like, come yeah. on. So it's cool. But. That's awesome to have, man. Uh, a supportive partner, you know, that knows what you're going through and stuff like that. It's like, it's massive. It's like having a team, uh, you know, in real life. And um, as opposed to just being out there by yourself, you know, kind of blown in the wind. So that's huge. Um, it's been, it's been awesome since then. Is there anything else you want to say about worlds in Turkey? Any other like things happen or any weird, weird stuff go down? Um, do you talk to Coco afterwards in the lobby or anything like that? Do you guys, cause I know Nick Peru and, and uh, Yaya like battled out like maybe the next day or later the same day. Um, and, you know, came up, he came up just shy as well. And so it's like, did you guys, do you guys see those dudes? Were they nice to you guys? Were they respectful and stuff like that? So I talked to him a little bit after the meet, um, like a very brief conversation. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much uh, communication there, but he was like, you know, kind of like along the realms of saying that, that I have potential, like, and that you, you got to learn, like you got to go through this and learn from it. Um, and yes, he's right. Obviously he's done. He's literally been in my boat and it's in a show from previous meets. Yeah. Um, but what if I don't want to have to learn as many times as you did? What if I don't want to, what if this is my only time to learn? So yeah. that conversation as well-intentioned as it was, I'm like, yeah, I'll see you on the platform in a couple months, you know? Yeah. Like, you don't, all, good, all good competition. You don't really want to get like have someone who who you see as a rival kind of like tell you what to do like like whatever like hey you got to learn from this but it's totally true because he has bombed out before on squat i mean yeah. for being too high and actually uh, going into this that was the whole storyline was that coco squats high i mean i don't think i wasn't super aware like i was obviously just like a big cheerleader for you so i wasn't very helpful as far as pointing out hey these squats are high these like like Chance Mitchell actually told you the hard thing, and, and and told you that they looked high. I was just like you know repost everything, and and I wasn't looking apparently close enough. Um, but you know that was the storyline was that he had been super inconsistent. He had he had squat high in training. He had bombed out of of a meet on squat. He didn't do super great in South Africa, so he's super vulnerable and everything like that. So he was on that redemption arc that you're on now. So I could kind of see even though you could, might take it as a little. Um, belittling or something like that, that that he's trying to give you advice but like you know obviously he just went through that exact same thing so i could see probably might not have been the right time for advice but yeah but i understand like like you, you know. just said like that was his redemption arc i mean maybe it was maybe it wasn't maybe it's leading to something bigger but yeah. that was part of his redemption arc i guess yeah. so you know i i understand but totally. all good competition there you know turkey was a great experience all in all i had a great time um I'm excited yeah. for the next one, man. I'm, yeah, I'm ready. Man. So had, and had you ever traveled internationally at that, you know, before you went to that meet? No, not like as, as far as that, mm -hmm. but, um, I, I traveled like to the Dominican Republic, which was only, you know, I don't know. I think like a seven hour flight or something like that. Yeah. But, not, not as far, but still like a totally different country than the U S yeah. Like that was, I mean, I was, I didn't have, any solid foods there like i didn't eat, eat anything solid because i was obviously cutting and i couldn't like mess around with any foods um so i literally had protein shakes and ice cream wow so i was like that was it you know i had ice cream and protein shakes and you were still strong i mean other than your, yeah other than the 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 squatting high stuff i mean it was like it was still super <laughs> super strong um looked yeah. like you had a shit ton left in the tank um so then coming out of that how important was it then for you to hit put up that 900 um in january back now at, at the meet in buffalo you know it was it was as casual as i did it as casually as i went in there and just did it not yeah. saying that everything was easy i'm just but it was casual it was, it was bliss it was easy it means a lot because now i have a clean slate i have a fresh slate i don't have that turkey meat behind me now i have something to pill over that and give myself a new foundation to build into this next season so yeah. i know like um, that I've been holding myself to better standards. I've been holding myself to higher standards. I've learned my lesson. I'm a person that has to learn sometimes. And mm -hmm. I learned my lesson, you know? Like, mm -hmm. listen, I, I'm going to have a lot more to learn. I'm not saying this is my only time I'm going to learn a lesson. There's going to be other things I learned from. But um, 
I I'm ready. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. And that meet was the epitome of just it. it, it I'm ready. I mean, <laughs> 900 is a big number. Um, I think the qualifying total for to get onto U.S. national team was like 905 or something, right? Um, yeah. And then I just saw, you know, Sheffield Emil does like 915. I mean, you're right there with the best 105s in the world. So, I mean, you have to be excited, man. Like, I know you're going to be nervous, going to have anxiety and all that kind of stuff. But like, at least at nationals too, I think like you're not going to have super serious challenge so you can kind of cruise like you did in buffalo uh and just kind of show everyone like what you're capable of and not have too much pressure or anxiety be too nervous or anything like that and then obviously you'll get the redemption the full-on redemption when you go back and and win a gold medal for team usa in uh, romania yes, yes. absolutely 100 percent so okay, so a couple of closing questions. Um, um, one question I've been wanting to ask you about is your decision not to do PA Nats. You know, because I remember. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I'm busy, so I'm like I'm doing a ton of stuff. But I don't know if I wasn't watching your training right or what. But when you put up that 900, everyone was messaging me, and and everyone was just sort of like, dude, like he has way more than five kilos in the tank, like on that deadlift alone probably has a, a more than five kilos left like we're gonna sign this guy up and get him down to austin and like get him on the u.s national team going to malta not romania for junior worlds so yeah. kind of give us a little bit of the background like you know that was a really quick turnaround because it was january 21st um the meet in buffalo and then it was going to be like february 24th or something so it was like basically a one month turnaround um and i know you had tough decision to make so tell us like kind of what went into that it was a tough decision because why wouldn't anyone take that opportunity? Um, obviously, Mikey D was going to do Sheffield, um, whatever. So I could I could go on the national platform and and make a debut there on the open. You know, hopefully, you know, whatever. Um, why wouldn't anyone take that decision? And that's that was a lot of what I was thinking. Why aren't you doing this? You know, there was a reason why, and I had to like kind of dig deeper and tap into that. And really, the reason why is because. I I want to I want to fix what I did in the past, right? Like I want to have my junior world title. I want to do what I did last year, but do it over better. That's not the only reason why. That's one reason. Next reason why is because I want to like I want to like battle with people at that national platform. Like I know I would have had a fight with uh, I Captain America lifts or something like that. Yeah, he's yeah, a very Justin strong guy. Uh, Justin, Justin Rogers, Rogers. Yes. Yeah. He's a really strong guy. You know, but I want to see, I wanted to see, you know, Mikey D there. Like I want to, I want to go against those guys. I want to be on that platform with them there. I want to do it that way, you know? Um, and again, I wanted time to recomp back to my old training weight. That's another big reason. I want to feel full again. I want to be full and just, I was really light and just not consistent in training. I mean, even though I pulled off something nice at that meet, I was still having a really shaky training cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there were things to clean up on my end, training wise. I mean, body weight wise, that I that I wasn't ready for, and that that turnaround was too quick. Um, and obviously, just for my own for my own brain, people might be like, "What is wrong with this guy listening to this?" But it's me, man. You know, I want to make the decision, and maybe it's a silly one, um, but I, I really don't care. I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. No, I mean, I talked to you in the moment and stuff, and obviously, you're you're a man of like super high integrity. And like, I think the, the reason w that you gave was like, you know, it's, it's a little bit unfair to go and take this spot on the world's team when Michael Davis doesn't get to be there to defend it, you know? Yep. And it's like, exactly. it, and it's kind of like, I, I, when you, you had a lot of reasons, like you said, um, but that was one that really stood out to me is like, man, this is a really high character dude. Like this man has integrity. Like, what does it mean to win that national title and get on the world spot when Michael Davis out totals you like a month later at Sheffield, you know, like that's going to be a weird situation, you know? Um, yep. And, and I thought, and and then also like the whole concept of like that redemption, like, hold on, I got unfinished business at junior worlds. Let Mikey Davis go, let Michael go handle business at worlds for the open team. Let me go handle it at the one Oh fives for the junior team, come back with two gold medals. And then we get to see battle Royale next year at nationals where we get to see two like world-class level 105s go head to head and and being right as well because like you would have been coming into that meet like a month you've just put up a huge total a month and for bigger bigger boys like yourself 105s and up and stuff 
do a big total like that two times in, in like 30 days. That's, that's tough. That's asking a lot, especially when you're under body weight, you know, yeah. and you're, when you're lean like that too, like you, the injury, you can get injured so easily, you know? So, so yeah, tell me a little bit more about the body recomp uh, situation. Yeah, man. So, um, after worlds, uh, obviously just getting back to training, I had a decision to, you know, hop on like a, a little bit of recomp wave. I had a friend help me out with that. He, um, he, he's a nutritionist, but he does like, uh, he has like his own, his own practice. He's an RD. Um, so he helped me kind of like recomp. So that meet, um, I was like at the peak of my, like my weight drop. So it was kind of like a bad time for that to be at. But at the same time, I was kind of like, okay with that because I wanted to just see what I could do at that low body weight. Um, not that that, it didn't really matter to me that much. I mean, I was still training. I was still strong. Yeah. Um, obviously not as strong as I could have been, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's why, you know, I saved that for, for that meet and I'm not doing it now. Like, it would be just silly to do it for nationals and world. I just, yeah. you know, who would do that? Um, it's like a trial run essentially. Um, so obviously seeing my performance of that meet, knowing that there was, it was good, but seeing how my bench went down, um, and whatnot, obviously body weight's got to stay up in the, in the off season and water cuts the way to go. I don't really see myself staying close to like that close or under comp weight ever again. Yeah. Um, it's not beneficial to me now that I'm like back at like a higher, I'm at like 236, 237 gaining it back. It took like a couple months. Um, I'm really just starting to see like most of my weight gain in the last month. That's awesome, um, dude. Yeah, it's 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 finally coming back, yeah. and I'm finally feeling like myself just in time for this nationals meet, yeah. um, which is so perfect because I was getting really nervous. I was eating so much, um, and kind of just doing it my way and just recomping that way, just seafood, eat food, you know. But like obviously yeah. to a degree, um, but I was still dropping weight. You know, like I got to a point where I was like 223, 224. I'm like, this is yeah. ridiculous. Like, what is going on? But I finally got myself to to kind of, you know, slow down. And then I hit like a wall where I was like 225, no up or down. And now I'm back up to 236, 237. And I feel it. You know, I feel really yeah. good. My squats just feel juicy again. Like I, have, I feel like I have legs under me again. I feel like I have chest and arms under me when I bench, you know. <laughs> so... We're feeling good, man. I, I'm excited. And I have a couple more weeks to just fine tune, you know, mm -hmm. shape up. And I'll be seeing you in Scottsdale. Yeah. yeah, five weeks, man. We're like five weeks out from this weekend, I think. And, uh, man, we're going to have a blast. The whole crew is going to be there. Shane, all the boys from Turkey. Vin will be there. Uh, Sam Sakura, you know, the whole crew. Um, is Audrey coming? I don't know. I hope she does because man, it'll be so fun. She, she, um, but um, man, yeah, I'm, I'm super looking forward to it. And I hope anyone that listens to this, you know, you're going to definitely want to watch the 105s because Anthony's going to put on a show. Um, okay. I got a couple quick hitters. I'll, I'll cut these a little short. So I'll get you off here because I know we're going super long on time here, but I um, want to just ask a couple of like, you know, fun questions, let, let people get to know you a little bit better. Um we already talked about it a little bit where you grew up, Long Island, that kind of stuff. What's your day job now? What's your career? Dude, I'm still at the hardware store. Okay, you're a hardware store, but aren't you a, yeah. a, a so, teacher and stuff? So, so here's the thing. So, like, I when I talked to you last, I was, like, doing my student teaching stuff. Um, yeah. So, that's, like, that's like obviously, you know, that's, like, kind of, like, you're interning. Um, okay. But now, like, I'm... Um, applying for schools and whatnot and, and kind of in that gray area waiting to hear back um but i'm also you know uh processing for the fdny which is like i'm not like 100 percent on it yet but like i have that opportunity to i scored really well on the examination the entry exam so wow. my class should be getting called within the year so um both good options great routes so i'm kind of like slowly like finding my way and mm -hmm. um you know, my, my dad's a fireman. My uncle's a fireman. My grandfather was a fireman. So it's kind of just like been passed down the roots, you know? Your, and, your uh, first powerlifting meet was in a firehouse. My first powerlifting meet was in the firehouse. Damn, you know? dog. The stars so, are aligning for you to be a fireman. The stars are aligning. 
That's awesome, man. I, there's no right or wrong choices. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Like it, it feels heavy. Like, uh, I have a sister that's your age and stuff and like picking a career and sticking with, you can change careers anytime in life, you know? And it's like, it's not a done deal. Like you, you could do the fire department and you might not like it. You could go back to doing teaching, you could do teaching and switch and get jump on the fire department. So, you know, you could just become a full, full on solo entrepreneur, Instagram, uh, only fans model, <laughs> social media influencer, whatever, whatever it's called. Uh, I mean, there's so many options for you, bro. So just like, you know, just keep training keep your head up. Like good things are going to come to you. Like, like it's like you've seen over and over. So, um, and wh what's your, um, gym that you train at? Like what's your home gym now? It's called RX fit. It's a, a 24 hour gym. Um, and it's, it's a pretty small gym. It's a CrossFit gym but it's got powerlifting stuff. There's like a powerlifting section and a CrossFit gym area. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's quiet there, you know? Um, great crowds. A lot of times, like high school kids will be like doing their football lists and stuff there. Like the other day when I squatted 744, um, there were like 20 football kids like in a circle, just like watching me do it. And like the coach was like, you yeah. know, like, yeah, it was dope. Like the kids are like, like i have a video i'll send it to you after this podcast you're gonna be like dude this is so funny what the hell you didn't post that or or did you post i that? did but you don't even like see like the kids because like okay. the angle that i got from my camera was just like yeah. the back spotters but like there were kids having back spot there were kids like all in front of me just like i had to tell them to like move because like if i were to see like 10 high school you know kids with their perms looking at me when i'm squatting 744 <laughs> i would have dropped it on my i would have dropped it <laughs> 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 that's amazing dude that's over your competition best um and yeah i mean dude that's great by the way do you have a perm right now no okay this is like that's my natural, natural curly hair okay because okay. yeah. you're talking perms and wheeze and stuff kind of got a little bit of a wheeze look going here a little bit it's a mini you know, like, it's it's a mcnaughton version yeah it's the shrek version it's not as like clean yeah 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 it's a cool version i like it it's yeah. your own thing um yeah. Okay. Other a couple more questions here. Like when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? Like if you could take away all the stresses from life and all the daily things that you have to do training all this and just have one weekend, you could do something fun. What would you do? I would go like camping in the woods. I, love I would that. go, I would go outside. I love being outside. Like I love being outdoors. I love like all that getting dirty, like, um, just survival tactic. Like I want to like, so as fire. I yeah, like as I lean out of this powerlifting stuff, I want to like do that in my later years. You know, like, yeah. I want to, I want to. I mean, I'm doing it now. Yeah, I go on hikes and stuff a little bit, but like, yeah. you know, powerlifting. I think like if I go on this much of a walk, I'm not going to be able to squat this as an RP. You know, it's just like yeah, yeah. Uh, God. And you but, can't just take three days and go into the woods and like not lift weights, right? <laughs> exactly. Like so, I can't lift. I'm not a strong man. I can't lift logs and stones. Like I got to use. Yeah. A legal barbell and legal plates and gotta yeah. have my new sleeves wrist wraps yeah i mean you i think that might be a cool goal to set like after each event like take a week and do something fun you know like that um i know scottsdale like there's mountains around um so that might be fun to stay a day and like do some hikes afterwards and stuff like that it's supposed to be pretty cool um so similar type of question do you prefer mountains or beaches that's a really really good question i'm gonna have to say mountains only no, no no this is tough man because i'm I'm a long island guy there's beaches surrounding me like i grew up by the water i need that in my life mm. but mountains are also awesome because like the peak and just looking and seeing the <sighs> okay like... all right i'm i'm gonna have to say beaches only because i need to have a body of water around me man dude there's like lakes and stuff in the mountains I mean, okay sure. fair fair mountains <laughs> that's fine fair Rivers, I'll take like the mountain. little 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 streams and shit i mean waterfalls and whatnot no but um that's that's interesting too um just like growing up in long island you don't think of it i don't really think of like new york city as like a a beach place and then also i was gonna say you know you're a sweaty dude like me so <laughs> as much as i love beaches it's like mountains are more like my climate you know like i'm more of a cold weather uh kind of thing as well so i could i could see you going but that's cool you could do either there's there's some beaches that are not hot and sweaty all the time so right um why do people call you shrek <laughs> <laughs> so um so a couple like back in college like a couple of my fraternity brothers right so there was like this joke because i would show them 
like pictures of me sh- like you know like bible and shredded like this and that like oh like you're like the hulk right and now they see me now like so one of my friends is like dude you're like shrek and i'm like you know i really love shrek i love all shrek movies shrek is yeah. it's kind of like me like i'm kind of like shrek yeah like i'm not i'm not that dirt well i'm kind of dirty but like not that dirty yeah but like his persona just like his not like nice guy He's a nice guy, but he's hurt. Yeah. You know, you gotta like yeah. break his shell. Yeah, you know? he's yeah, like he's yeah. like hiding the nice guy. He doesn't want to be nice because he got hurt so much. Yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah. But Shrek yeah. is it, it's funny. Cool. I mean, uh, it, it stuck. It, it sounded like it was a little bit of an insult to start with, um, but then you <laughs> turn it into something positive, and it, you're like, "Hey, if the shoe fits, I'm gonna wear it." Yeah. Listen, man. Shrek is Shrek is strong. Shrek is Absolutely. really strong. And then so. now with, with, uh, I called her Fiona, uh, with Audrey, like just a good <laughs> fits. It's a nice fit, man. It is. Yeah. Beauty and the beast over here, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone's like, everyone, that's why I captioned that picture today. Shrek and Fiona. Yeah, everyone, nice. everyone was like, this is so cute. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's ridiculously cute. You guys are like a little bit too cute. Um, <laughs> but who's a person in powerlifting that you look up to or that you looked up to when you were coming up? That's a really, really good question. So back in the day, I used to watch Sean Noriega religiously. I mean, like I would watch every single session I'd come home, I'd like eat my food and watch and throw on some hamstring poppy when he used to like put on like his like he used to like record a lot more than he does. And I really liked yeah. his like personal like like just vlogs and talking about training and stuff and like just you know, just like learning about that. I really like that. Um Somebody that I looked up to, look up to. Now, a lot of people I looked up to are becoming my competitors. I mean, I looked up to Mikey D when I first started too, lifting all these crazy weights, you know? Yeah. Um, so he was definitely an inspiration in the past. I mean, Bob Ash and all these like guys just that are insane, you know? Yeah. Um, but to get on a more personal level, I think like, like my friend Luke and my other friend tim like they were like workout buddies like they those two like you know motivated me at first but they still do like it's because i don't know it's it's weird like yes they i looked up to them in the sport i still do i i guess i look up to what they give back now because they're not maybe the best competitors anymore but they give back to the sport in any way that they can you know luke like it's on a different path but it doesn't matter. He still contributes and he's still a person of the sport and he still has really good knowledge. So I still look up to him for that. Like he has that wisdom. Um, so yeah, I guess it'll always be those two. That's good, man. That's a good answer. Um, that's a well-rounded answer there too. You know, um, not just powerlifting famous people, you know, but like people who had an impact in your life, um, at key moments. Um, what's your favorite sport to watch? Probably football definitely football that's the um, right answer yeah i i can't watch baseball i can't watch soccer then i watch like ufc you know like i'll watch ufc um in the NBA. but not like nah yeah nah, i'm not really a basketball guy but football. See, i like the nba but it's just i i never get around to watching it i hear you i hear you so i i just i just no interest for me i, I don't know you know like I like playing basketball. Like that's fun. Like a pickup game, absolutely. But I just can't watch the sport. Nice, damn. Talk about, dude. We don't want to go against France uh, in pickup. Those guys are tall, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so we sure. gotta come up with something else. We'll do bowling against them or something. Um, bowling, what's I'll your, take that. What's your favorite football team then? You know, you're gonna hate me for this, but uh, I've always been a Giants guy. Always will. I love that. I'm glad you didn't say well. Buffalo Bills. So it's perfect. <laughs> No, absolutely not. Nice. All right, dude. Okay, last last one is uh, the music question. So what's your uh, genre of music of choice? And then, like, who's your favorite rapper? All right, so my favorite music choice is definitely, like, 70s, 80s rock. Um, big, uh, I love classic rock. Um, I listen to some 50s and 60s, but very rarely. But, like, most of it's, like, my 70s and 80s stuff. And then my favorite rapper... Wait, before you say, so name a yeah. specific artist for 70s. Oh, who do you like? Like, or all right, song? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Journey just because Journey, they're, they're so great. 
Awesome. Uh, I'm writing this down so I have like some uh can pick the right songs for your reels and stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. And fa- who's your favorite rapper? I used to, I used to love. Mm. And you might not. I'm gonna like have. That. I'm gonna have to go. Like, I really listen. I, I like Biggie. Nice. That's a good. That's a really good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I knew you were a good kid. That's the right <laughs> answer, bro. Yeah. Like Ooh, I like man. a lot of rappers now, but you know, it's. I feel like now I'm not really tied to rappers anymore because a lot of them are hit or miss for me at least. So I'm mm-hmm. tied to songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there what do you listen to like when you're when you want to get hyped up like for a big lift or do you? Yeah, because I remember you had to borrow my headphones in uh yes in Buffalo. You're you're stopped working and you're like, yeah, I remember that. So it was must have been important. <laughs> yes, I was dude. You 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 saved me. You literally saved me. I <laughs> yeah. still actually it still shows up like on my phone when I go connect, it still says Paul's beats. And I'm like, I'm never gonna take that off because like that's a good reminder. But um I think not think i have such a weird for my okay for a top set like let's say for a top set i'm throwing on like corn okay like a rock but with upright like, stuff yeah like like corn or like um like avenge sevenfold um oh, you, like, you like older stuff for sure i do i'm a, yeah I, my music taste is, is definitely uh interesting i like i like everything but um really just those was it you know like I, go ahead sorry sorry no you go ahead. first no okay. i'm gonna take us um, on a different ch- path here <laughs> okay all right so like again like i'm more tied to songs so like right now i think my favorite song that i've been using for my top sets has been it's on my special playlist here special okay it's uh self-medicated by until i wake until i wake um that's that's one of my favorite songs and then um now we are free by lisa gerard i use that for my seven uh i think i used it for my 705s okay. go from the other day for the real i but, i normally look back and try to see what people are gonna do like that yeah i i like everything if the, if, it, if the instrumentals hit if the vocals hit like that's it that's my that's my top set song add to the playlist star it like it whatever that's it yeah. So I like take a lot of like other lifters, like real audios and I'll like listen to them and I'll see if I like them, you know, like, yeah. And save it. Yeah. Um, do you think you're, you're, um, drawn to classic rock? Like, was that the stuff you were, your grandpa was listening to? Like when you would go down in the basement or whatever? Yeah. I think that's where like, the, like the inspiration yeah. first started. And like a lot of it is just like, it's just about good things, you know? Yeah. Like I, I just like it. It, it I don't know. It reminds me of like the summer, like having like a cold beer outside totally. like, with nostalgia. some buddies. Nostalgia. Yeah. That's what that feeling is. Yeah. I love that. It's so cool. It can definitely put feeling. you, you know, that, that kind of music definitely puts me in like that very like type of mood. Um, it's not the mood for lifting. It's more for like chilling and stuff like that. But, exactly. um, and just for having like good, good vibes, like on the weekend with friends and like you said, cold beer, summertime, yeah. <clears throat> that's perfect. All right, bro. Well, we've been going forever here, so um, I'm going to let you go. Um, but it's awesome um, just getting to know you a little bit more. I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So I know like this will probably be all new for people who don't know you, um, yeah. you know, all new stuff. So thank you so much. Is there anyone, do you have any sponsors, anyone you want to thank? I always forget to ask people about this. I, for you, I remembered. Um, anything like that? Nothing yet. Um, okay. But I want to just thank everyone that has been on my journey. So like, you know, people like Luke, you, I mean, just like everyone. I want to thank everyone. You know, even if you aren't a part of my journey, like if yeah. if you were someone that I just looked to, right? Thank you. So thank you for having me on this. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's a great po- it's a great way to end it. Um super positive, grateful. You're you're a great dude. I hope anyone who listens to this like just be ready to cheer your ass off when this man takes the stage in Romania. Um, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, we got to go through nationals in Scottsdale, but hopefully we'll see you in Romania and we'll see that gold medal come back and uh, we'll see you move on out, handle business and put all that behind you and now take on the next challenge. So, all right, dude. Um, thanks again for your time and everything. And thanks to everyone who's listening to the Power of the America podcast.
with that, we are out of here. Peace. Peace out.